the Dynasty, a team that has been chocked full of talent since the start of the Overwatch League. When you think of Seoul Dynasty, this is a team that was supposed to be the pride of South Korea. Throughout the league's history, they've never had the shining moment. It's never been an elite team like New York, you know, like the Vancouver Titans now. 어 일단 저희 팀은 이제 잠재력을 다 보여줬다고 생각은 안 하고요. 왜냐면은 이제 날이 갈수록 점점 더 잘해질 것 같아서 저희는 아직 보여줄 게 많다고 생각해요. 더 보여주고 싶은 거는 더욱 더 성장할 수 있는 팀이라는 걸그 가능성을 보여주고 싶습니다. San Francisco, bring it home. The Seoul Dynasty put up a better fight than the last, but after map one, it was just utter domination. 음 저희가 상위권 팀이 되려면은. 좀더좀 탄탄한 이미지를 심어줘야 된다고 생각하는데 이제 거기까지 가기에 지금 정말 지금 노력을 하고 있으니까 성장할 수 있을 거라고 봅니다. Fisher will be retiring from the Overwatch League effective immediately. Dynasty parted ways with damage dealer Munchkin. 저희 팀 지금 분위기 자체가 여러 선수들이 좀 나가고 이런 것 때문에 좀 어수선한 분위기가 있을 수도 있는데 서로 서로 메꿔주면서 지금 다들 열심히 하고 있습니다. For the Dynasty, we need to see more from them. They have a tough schedule. I mean, going up against the Shock, then against the Dragons, that is a big ask. But if this team wants to have any chance of getting into playoffs, they need to be winning these games. 일단 지금 현재 상위권 팀들 대부분이 자기 팀만의 색깔을 확고하게 좀 가지고 있는 팀이 많은데 저희는 좀 그런 부분에서 좀 약한 부분 모습을 좀 보이는 게 많은 것 같아서. Against the Seoul Dynasty, the LA Valiant extend us to one final round on Ilios to settle it all. Bomb bomb. Space manages to come up with a pick. That may be a map. That's probably it. Probably lights out for the Seoul Dynasty. Ilios 3 round 때 이제 저희가 어쩌면 뺏었고 상대가 이제 들어올 때 그때 솔직히 솔직하게 말하면은 아 큰일 났다. Shot on the Kareem, that's a stagger. And the Seoul Dynasty close it out. Their first win in Sage 4. Pitch 선수하고 Illish 선수가 정말 잘해줘서 이겼지 않나. The Dynasty will be able to maintain control of the point for the Lizard coming up with a 4K on the back end. 발리언트전 경기가 엄청 중요했다고 생각을 하는 게 스테이지 4를 저희가 안 좋게 2연패를 하면서 시작을 했었고 그거를 끊은 기점이 되었고요. 이거를 끊음으로써 저희가 좀더 저희 페이스를 찾아올 수 있지 않나 싶기도 하고 이걸로 인해서 저희 선수들이 좀더 희망을 가졌으면 좋겠어요. And welcome back one more match this evening. I'm Achilles back here with Wolf and it is time for the Seoul Dynasty to go up against the Guangzhou Charge. Heavy importance for both of these teams coming in trying to get victories. Playoffs are looming on the horizon. Certainly, and for Seoul Dynasty, it's about reclaiming old glory, right? It's yeah. about trying to make a difference in this final stage to guarantee themselves one of those top spots to have their first season playoffs. They've only had two seasons, but a lot of people put Seoul as actually the favorites to win the 2018 season. In the inaugural season, they came in as ex-Lunatic High, and everyone said this team is going to win it, didn't make season playoffs. This could transpire again if they have a weak end to stage four. You can see right there, they are just outside that top six in that seventh place position, going to be looking to move up. Charge, however, down at 11. They have that negative win-loss record as well as the map differential. So a firm win, a clear-cut one here, would do wonders for them to make sure that they can get into that top 12 spot for the end-of-season playoffs. And that is the big you know, moment they're looking for is to take these top wins. If we take a look at the previous match we had between these two Chinese teams, Guangzhou and Hangzhou, you know, it ended up being a pretty dominant map or match for the charge, which a lot of people were surprised by, but they just look so clean right now. And a lot of teams are looking better than they did in the 3-3 meta yep. because the DPS lock is in and you see just so much success from Nero in particular. He's so flexible. And the charge, I think, I, I personally would argue, come in as favorites in this series tonight. I mean, having, you know, Happy, having Nero, as you say, it's going to be a tall order for the Soul Dynasty to take them down. One of the big members on the side of the Dynasty that we expect to be fielded here tonight is going to be Illicit, putting up a lot of different heroes here on the board. May going to be the most predominant one, but he has 
been going over to different picks throughout the series. And it's crazy to see how across the board he is pretty even between these six heroes, his top six. Obviously, May in this meta being the most usage, but we see a lot of Genji out of him as well. So something to look out for for Illicit, being a little bit more flexible, a little bit more successful than Fleta overall, which is a big surprise if you watched last season. Of course, Illicit, a new addition to the roster this year. That one we'll see. Soul Dynasty going to be looking to continue that momentum after taking down the Valiant. Going to be looking for another win here today. Like we said, both of these teams going to be vying for victory. So let's see who comes out on top. Let's go ahead and bring in our first squad. It's the Guangzhou Charge. Guangzhou looking in absolute form right now. Nero, the man himself, is a great DPS partner with Happy. There's so many of these in the league right now that we have this roll lock. 2-2-2 two, 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 means that your DPS partner is someone that you've got to work well with in this meta, especially with Double Sniper being so prevalent, May Reaper being so prevalent. And Nero and Happy are one of those pairs that you can always count on to come up big. And it's crazy to see how successful Nero is as the only Western player in this starting lineup. But he has absolutely defied all expectations. People were worried about communications, comms, how the synergy will work. And after seeing him play, especially at the end of Stage 3 and Stage 4, no one is worried anymore. Everyone is just colored impressed. Yeah, well, let's see what Nero can deliver for us here tonight. Expecting some great moments from him. But let's go ahead and bring out their opponents and challengers here in this matchup. It's the Soul Dynasty. Repping 82, I'm in Soul City. Riding down the streets, got my homies with me. Soul Dynasty has had a top, top road towards the end of this season to try to maintain that top six spot. They're not there yet. This one will put them one step closer. As you see, the old support duo Toby and Jaehong will start tonight. And they're bringing in a squad here, starting on control that's very familiar to everybody. Will be fits and illicit on the DPS duo. This is something to really zoom in on and look at because we've been seeing more illicit than Fleta in recent times. And illicit story is actually very similar to Fleta's. Fleta was a player on a team called Flashlux. And there's a term Fleta deadlift that comes from carrying yeah. that that uh, team and obviously having a lot of final blows, right? 50% or more of total. Illicit comes from a team called Blossom, which was actually at the bottom of the standings in Korea for a very long time. And he was one of the players that was played very infrequently. And he's made it so far since then. Now he's on the Soul Dynasty, a dream team for many Korean players. He faces off against Nero. Both extremely flexible players who could play the hit scan and projectile. You're gonna see him on the Genji a lot. You're gonna see him on the Mei. And when you take a look at their ranks on the May in particular, you can see in terms of Blizzard kills and team fight win rate, Illicit is number one right now. So that's something to look out for when we do end up going into those mirrors, especially the Reaper May across the board. Yeah, just need the team really to kind of back you as soon as that Blizzard does come out. So it seems like that's going to be one of the strongest suits for the Dynasty that we'll keep our eyes on. Let's go ahead and put our eyes on that map set presented by Toyota and see where we're going to be headed for the series. It will be Ilios to begin, then into Hanamura, Kings Row, and Route 66. We eluded a map five there in that last series between Toronto and Florida, but perhaps we can close the evening on another map five. It's certainly possible this series absolutely could go the distance. And we're gonna start things off on Well. We have seen a lot of different compositions in terms of Faro we've seen quite a bit. We saw it from Shadowburn just earlier. We do see the Reaper May, and you also see a lot of McCree Hanzo to poke out the Reaper May. It looks like that's what Guangzhou Charge would like to start. And it's a pretty safe composition to run out on too, because if you end up in a mirror with the Hanzo McCree, you just mechanically outduel. If it's a Farah, you've got the answer to the Farah. And if it's May Reaper on the first push, you've got a really good shot of out poking. Well, Fitz looking at to maybe at least get an initial snipe. Now, we'll still be pushing forward here with the Widowmaker. I was surprised to see him start this. Already getting a nice little shot there. Onto Hotpa, he's gonna be rotating around to the right-hand side as we take a look at Illicit up in the skies. And Nero will have the headshot to go ahead and get rid of that Farah. And I believe he died in such a position that getting a res is not gonna happen. Nero instead 
Just gonna come up with a double. It's another headshot onto Fitz. He's dealt with both threats at the same time. And that's, I mean, that's incredible, especially to get a just a regular headshot kill as Hanzo, not a Sonic Arrow one and not a Storm Arrow headshot kill. It's very difficult to do against a far in the sky. He hits the headshot onto Fitz. So he just completely shuts down any opening the Soul Dynasty had in neutral with a double threat there. And now they have control of this corner. Yep, it's gonna be bunkered down here. Waiting for the Dynasty to go on their approach. We see them playing off over into that back left side. Nero just gonna be looking to build up for that Dragon Strike. Still a little ways to go. As they break down that barrier, finally start chipping away at Marble, who's hovering at about half HP. Elicit, however, just managed to find a kill on a Rio. And the charge are not running a Mercy, so they cannot get a Rez in. And Elicit comes up with a double kill. A shoe will also be taken down. Just playing around that windmill here on the other side of the well. Now Nero gonna be eliminated. It seems pretty likely that Soul Dynasty should be able to get this flip. Happy manages to find one, but Hotma's so low. And running out of the Matrix will get taken down, and that will be the flip, but 55% accrued for the charge. Toby grabbing the res here onto Illicit is very big so that he can actually control the high ground space here. From above, poke down the members of the charge that try to come through this walkway around the barrier. And just having that extra threat as the approach comes through for the charge is a great feeling to have if you're the defending team in this case. They also have a barrage they can use when the soul decide to commit in. Just hanging around this lighthouse right now to avoid being hit by a sleep dart or any of Happy's stray left clicks. Supercharger drop first. Elicit. As everybody's inside, just waiting to see where they're going to be approaching from. They have the Infrasight now. This could be huge if he gets behind the D.Va. Risky, though. Well, they do know where he's at. Covering right above, dropping those rockets through. D.Va, going to be pushing up here into the air. Hotbot trying to push him out of this position. He's unable to do so. Now Nero's going to be taken down. One member weaker are the Guangzhou Charge. Good push back there with the concussive blast from Elicit, just keeping himself safe up in the sky. Now dropping in, D-Matrix is there, committing the barrage, and Hotbot does take him down. That was not the window of opportunity that he wanted. Just gonna make the flip happen now. Got a little bit impatient there, you know? I mean, he was threatening Hoppa, but Hoppa would not die. Nice dink there from Happy. Gets a shot on the fence, and Charlie goes around the back. Manages to take down that enemy Widow. Flip comes through. Nice to see with a very bare bones lead at the moment. 67% of the 60 that the charge have. Well, they punished the res. It looks like it. Ooh. Toby's down. Yep. No way out of this one. Greedy Resurrect there gets absolutely punished. So. Charge, now taking the lead and control meter. They have a Deadeye to stop the Farah approach. There's no threat of a barrage. And Soul Dynasty don't have any initiation ultimates. They don't have a nano boost to try to get somebody on the point. They don't have Valkyrie. So, I mean, if you're happy, you're just sitting here looking for a, a potential Deadeye pick, and you know the fight is going to be in your advantage from the outset. Spots the Pharmacy around the back. Suddenly flips forward, nearly takes down Fitz. One additional headshot there, and he would have had it. Oh my god, just listen to the clicks coming through. Marble gets melted by Happy. Headshot after headshot. This guy is just incredible. Now follows up as Michelle will get knocked out of that mech. We were in the overtime here for the charge. She's going to be taken down, but the dead eye is there. And Happy snipes Toby right out of the sky. Fits sent off the side. Now the baby diva finished off. Just clean up duty here for the charge to take this first round. Honestly, giving him some hard times. But still going to be that first round well going over to the Guangzhou Charge. The Deadeye is always a nightmare in scrappy fights when you're a Mercy or even a Farah in this case because you're always under threat because you don't have a large health pool of getting popped by the Deadeye early. But to be honest, when I see Happy flank and start firing at Marvel, all I see is a red skull on Marvel's head. He did not miss. He was hitting the headshots. He did not make that fight look fair in any way. Happy most famous for his Widowmaker, of course, but he is a great hit scan player when he does have these opportunities to play the McCree. It makes it difficult, you know, to even consider running a Farah. Now, yeah. Soul have a really wacky comp they're starting to run out with here. It looks like, unless they swap the last second, the Farah Reaper. And that's not standard. You have two threats. You have one on the ground, obviously, and the Reaper, and you can bust off tanks, but it is certainly hard to execute that synergy, and in fact, Fitz will swap. Yeah. Unorthodox. But also just strange that we have not seen the, the maze come through yet. From either side, Nero is going to be on his Farah with Happy on the Doomfist. That's why Fitz swapped to Widow in particular to have that kind of counter 
to the Faro so they can win the Faro battle themselves. Soul Dynasty to then control the point. First flip goes to charge though with a threat of the Doomfist. Soul just cannot collapse in. Well, they start working their way through. Instantly Seismic slammed down onto Marvel. The cap will come in as they pull back. Took just a little bit too much damage, so have to play a bit safer. Pocket healing still gonna be there for Nero as he hovers up here in the skies, trying to find his next target. j home going lower and lower. Needs some support from Toby. Actually gonna be shooting happy now. Take it down as Nero tries to get the kill here on a fits. Will be able to do so, but it's just a two for one. I'm basically making three as Hotbuck gets taken out of the back. Drop low here on the point, just trying to get that barrage online. We'll get cut down by Jay Hong on the flank, and Dynasty will have a very fast flip. Happy swapped over to the Sombra here. Rio is going on to the Wrecking Ball, and they're not going to allow Soul Dynasty to just sit fortified behind this shield to operate on the point itself. You know, when things get dicey, back up, take control of that. They want to have the ability to hard engage with EMP. Nero's Tracer pick is one of the more interesting parts of this because you can sometimes blow up a support with this, but otherwise you're gonna have a lot of trouble getting through Marvel's armor, and you're not gonna have any potential to shut down the Reaper or the Farah. You just don't have the damage output to do so in a one clip. Yeah, certainly can make things a lot more difficult, puts a lot more pressure on the likes of Hot Button Shoe to try to get that far out of the sky until the EMP becomes available. Let's have he can get on top of the platform and dump in those attacks here. But now Jay Hong gonna be set off the side of the map. Fitz will be taken down by Nero on the tracer. So good fortune so far for the charge with these character swaps. Nero will be able to find another, another one as Marvel will get taken down. And they finish Valkyrie. off. Yeah, the Valkyrie was used. They'll be just trying to stick in here, but will get burned down in the end. So another fast flip for the most part here for the charge. 57% for the dynasty. Looks like we're gonna see a May swap here for Illicit. Yep, there it is. Just lets the barrage go. That's why we saw the Valkyrie there, because you just want to buy a few extra percent, and they're going to swap composition completely to, you know, the what we've been calling a lot of different things. But pulse bomb potential here is definitely there, but it's also pretty easy for Michelle to shut this down. He misses. Not going to be able to find the stick. So a bit of damage there onto Michelle, but not exactly what you wanted, especially when he had them completely caught off guard. Soul is on the point, and this cough just basically cannot be beaten. Dash up the side charge, gonna be taken down, but Toby is answered for as well as the Bionade connects in from Shu. There's to find that one, but now Rio gonna be gone. They're home trying to stay alive with that Moira, sliver of HP remaining, but self destruct from Hot Butt, not gonna be able to find anything, and they finish off that baby D.Va. It's getting shipped lower and lower. Seems like he will be all right. Takes down Nero in the end. Back in control, back in the lead of the dynasty. Once you get on the point with this composition that Soul is running, it's almost impossible to crack with something like a Tracer. And for this reason, they really have to rely on the EMP engage. If this engage goes poorly, then Guangzhou are going to lose this round very likely. They're going to have a Pulse Bomb too. Look at where Fitz is hiding. A very sneaky Reaper. Gotta be careful, that sleep dart comes in, Set's gonna be the Bionade. Fitz will go low, drops down, looking for the hit, there's the sleep, there he's getting finished off. Shu comes up with a kill. Toby will be able to go ahead and finish off that Ana, but it's at the cost of three members on the side of the Dynasty. Fitz with his solo mission, just couldn't quite get it done. The rest of the team left vulnerable. Dynasty will lose the point again. As the clip gets ready to come through, Jae Hong just trying to buy as much time as he can, but it doesn't last very long. They're at 99%. Fitz. One fight territory for them. Fits with the unnecessary flank there. He played really greedy, he played risky. In a situation where he could have just played safer and played the point, used the extra healing there from Jaehong and gotten a Death Blossom in the fight. He's gonna have it for this next one. They're gonna have Blizzard, but getting to the point itself is the hard part versus EMP and they don't know where Happy is. Well, they do now. Into the back, just gonna be making sure they can't be using that Mega Pack. They do force him away as he falls dangerously low. Death Blossom now online. Dynasty are in onto the point. They actually get the flip. Sound barrier coming through from the Guangzhou charge, charge the pile driver. Unable to find anything. And Illicit loses out on the blizzard. Hotpa knobs that one up. Fitz gonna be popping the Death Blossom. He's down about half HP. Hotpa makes it back with the mech intact. Self-destruct from Michelle. Manages to find one as Rio will get taken down. Can they clear them off the point? So far it's looking pretty darn good because Happy is gone. Nero off the side of the map. Believe he might have recalled off the side. They finish off Hotpa and the Dynasty will be able to take Lighthouse, time to settle it all on Ruins. Very close call. Papa eats both the Blizzard and the Death Blossom, but they get enough of a positional advantage there that it doesn't matter, and it's so hard to kill the May and Reaper in the front line when they've got healing coming out from a Moira, the Moira heal orb, the Moira left click, amp it up, all of this, plus the extra life seal. 
I mean, how do you break that front line with what the Charge are running? EMP's your only bet that still wasn't enough. Toby didn't even have to use Sound Barrier in that fight. Yep. Now, for this next engage, it looks like we're going to see the May Reaper opening for Soul. They're going to try to rush to the point. This is a new, very common thing that we're going to start seeing, especially on this map. Teleporter to open. Yep, Toby waits behind so he can teleport or speed boost the Reaper back in so he can rejoin faster. But getting your May onto the point first is what you really want to do. Working their way forward. It's going to be over on that left side. Dynasty set up. If they do want to pull forward, the answer is going to be yes. Bumble takes a lot of damage, but fearlessly charging forward are this whole Dynasty. And they are going to be profiting from that as Nero and Hotspot both get taken down. The Mortality Field, great focus fire there from the Dynasty, ensuring that no one will survive for that from that. And that will be the first cap going through for them. When you see the charge of swapping their composition, it's very difficult to utilize what they had, especially the Batiste versus an already entrenched Soul Dynasty. They have to mirror. They took a gamble running the composition, hoping they get an opening pick. They just couldn't win the race without the teleporter. They're in trouble now in terms of ult economy, that's for sure. Yeah, pushing their way up, Coalescence is there from Jayhawk. Looking to weaken whoever he can. Rio falling low, will get finished off a shell. Yeah, there to help ensure that final blow. Hotbutt can't quite make it to the other side of the wall. Will get knocked out of that mech. Likely left to jump off the side. Now we'll just get cleaned up by Fitz here at the end. We can retreat safely with that Wraith walk and hover above with that Death Blossom ready to go. They just want to get up on this high ground and control this zone. So they can drop down on the charge when they come through. You know, this forces a lot more slow play from Guangzhou charge, as you can see here. You have to be cleared by Hotball. They have to contest. This buys time. They get to retreat back and fight on the point. Force pits away. Wall goes up, looking to isolate somebody. So far, not going to be able to find it. But now the Death Blossom gets up dead. Fits manages the final one. The Shara does get taken down. Elicit uses the Blizzard to clean up here onto Nero. The freeze onto Rio. They're all just sitting ducks. Dynasty, another team fight victory. Guangzhou charge. What can they do to get this back into their favor? I mean. When you look at things, it's going to have to be a Blizzard opening in this fight. They have the Blizzard versus no Blizzard, and if they can catch everyone, even a Sound Barrier won't be enough because, you know, you're still going to be frozen and the fight's still going to be won. It has to go off first. He needs to freeze the D.Va and then drop it in. Yep, he spots Michelle, goes ahead, throws down that Blizzard. The Sound Barrier is out from Toby. Self-destruct into the air from Michelle. They're going to create some space and actually find the pick on the Nero, taking him down. They hope will be on the exchange as Rio comes up with one. Happy now, receiving the sound barrier out from Chara, has the Death Blossom available. That cap coming through, Toby, dangerously low, trying to duke it out in the 1v1 versus the Lucius here. As both the wrists will fall, but now Happy gonna be eliminated, might not be able to use that Death Blossom at all in this map. OT starting to dwindle. Push forward from Hot Buff, playing solo here onto the point, will get knocked out. Self-destruct forced. So far, no one focused firing that maybe even seems like he might actually be able to stay alive. Finn building up another Death Blossom. Not going to be able to find much because that D-Matrix is there. They didn't punish Hotba, so he can keep everybody else alive through the opposing Reaper's ultimate. Elicit so coming back. Remaining, remaining there from Hotba. Elicit coming back in, as you say. Finn's going to be taken down the Death Blossom there for Happy. Again, unable to find anything, but they keep protected, so he's at least still in the fight. One member down here for the Soul Dynasty as they try to close this one out, but Toby's going to get picked. Now Elicit and Jayhawk going to go down. It seems like this will not be 100 to zero. The flip will be there for the charge. Now the Soul Dynasty will not make the same mistake that Philadelphia made earlier. They will simply let the point go, respawn, change heroes. Marvel's going back to the Orisa. They're not on stall mode anymore. They're going back to team fight. Uh, you know, it's basically standard team fight ult bills, eco pushing here. This actually could be the push if they could somehow bait the Blizzard out from Nero. They could be patient. You don't want to commit ultimates unless they're sure this is a one-team fight. That's how Guangzhou gets back in. They wall them off and nearly pick off Shu. Right at the beginning of it all. Coalescence is going to be coming in. They get the hold to drag them all forward. Blizzard out from both sides. Happy going low. Barely survives as the sound barrier comes through. And it's going to be Fitz and Marble both taken down. Elicit trying to survive, but he just will not be able to do so. And it seems like the charge will be able to win that one out. Dynasty swept under the rug. Now, that was a lot of commitment there. That didn't need to be done. They could have been a little bit more passive. Sometimes you see blood in the water when you have all these ultimates, and you know that you win the map, you win the fight, but 
now you've given Guangzhou a chance to turn the ult economy on its head. And they're more than halfway to winning this map now. High ground taken away here. So we're going to have to loop around the right side using this ice wall. Once they get to the point, they can try to operate around this death blossom, but charge have their own. So it's very cautious. The approach has to be the Soul Dynasty. Trying to inch our way forward, but Marvel taking so much damage in between these barrier placements. Got to be careful. Happy caught out there for the moment. Will be forced to use the Wraith Walk as the TP comes in from above. Dropping down. Looking for the Death Blossom set up. That's going to be Tra. Now Happy taken out. Who made advantage over to the side of the Soul Dynasty. They just look for more targets. Bionate goes forward there onto Rio and Nero. The first one going to fall now. Both going to be taken out. Whip is there. 99% for the overtime. Guangzhou charge. Can they hold this one off? Get pushed back over onto the point, but Hot is going to be knocked out of the back. He doesn't have a self destruct to try to make his way back in. He and Shu both now going to be eliminated. Happy rejoins. Uses the Death Blossom, but the D Matrix is there from Michelle. Denies away the damage. Rio going to be frozen. Take it out. Wall comes up, and Soul Dynasty advance forward with a win on Ilios. What a few great plays we just saw from Soul Dynasty. The big one is Fitz on the top of the pillar, sets up the Death Blossom from above, catches Shara, and it was just lightning fast reactions. He makes the call, he goes up to the pillar knowing that that has to be the game winning or losing moment. No hesitation, and Soul takes the lead. But a hard fought win for that lead for the Soul Dynasty. Let's see if the charge can tie us up when we come back. The Overwatch League is powered by Intel. Game, record, stream without compromise on Intel Core i7. And by Omen by HP, the official PC and display of the Overwatch League. They don't just play for a team. They play for every fan, every rival, every moment, every match. And when everyone watching expects the best, they perform with the best. ever closer as are the playoffs, but the Kid Cat rivalry weekend is nearly here, the 24th and 25th of August coming up fast, so make sure you guys get your tickets in now before they sell out. Yeah, it's gonna be a great event. Uh, in particular, I'm looking forward to the stage one and two finals rematch aspect of that. Shock versus the Titan is gonna be very exciting, but I mean, there's a lot of great games in there, so uh, oh, it's sure. it's definitely shaping up to be our best home stand yet, so don't miss it. This series, on uh, the other hand, has actually been quite close as well. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it, 
very back and forth. Three rounds on Ilios just to settle it all. It seemed like Soul was going to be able to get the 100 at zero on that last round of Ruins, but Charge came back in and gave them a run for their money. Now, Fitz having that last pillar set up there for the Death Blossom, very impressive. Getting those kills when they were needed most for the Dynasty. We're heading into Hanamura today here in our final series. And we'll have to see whether we'll, we'll see that Fara here, or is it just going to be the more standard? Because we've seen a lot of Fara to start things off, but nope, not to be the case here. Oh, seems like we might have a bit of an issue here on the side of this whole dynasty. So we'll get things taken care of so we can jump straight back into game. No substitutions, obviously. So should uh, be quite fast for us to go ahead and get right back in here. Now, uh, talking about Fitz, so we have an interesting stat for him, so I am told, uh, going to the second map. What do you got, Captain Planet? This uh, might just be Reaper stats on the last map. It is, in fact. So six Death Blossom kills in total there, and 12k damage. So Fitz, coming up big, I mean, this is a hero that's so meta right now, and you can't play the hero alone. Like, you really need to rely on your team setups for you. You need to rely on your Mei, giving that extra pressure, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so the duo has been looking pretty good so far, but we are back in game. That we are. Seems like just a bit of a scouting mission here, at least to start. Fitz gonna be charging forward with the Sombra. And he says, yep, they got a Hanzo, they got a Mei. They also have a Batiste, so 369 comp coming in for the Guangzhou charge. Dynasty just gonna be running May Reaper. And Happy looking for this flank here, the Ooh. defensive flank. It's actually very powerful. A really good shot there on a fit. Somebody to capitalize though, unfortunately, for the side of the Guangzhou charge. But now stepped up, take it down. Hoppa finds that hook through. They just sit here on the staircase. May wall only lasts for so long. Nero with a perfect ice wall set up too to trap them. That was, again, just great synergy between these damage players. Getting it done. Well, they managed to find Chara. Getting out of here as solo is is not the option. You have to fight. And as you say, they get that first pick. Now they have the setup here onto the point. Jay Hong, ready? With that nano boost, we'll go ahead and toss that one forward. You know, pushes his way out from the point. Will get frozen, however. Likelihood knocked out of this mech you would expect. He's trying to jet his way onto the roof, but he just can't quite get there. He still was able to take down Shu. Cap is coming in, and Soul Dynasty at 5.45 in the time bank. That was an insane play to just nano the D.Va. Hey, <laughs> Jae Hong. Go distract him. <laughs> Jae Hong put the damage in using that nano boost, and they got extreme value off of that. And it felt very much like on the whims, you know? It was not a it was not a pre-planned strategy. They were just like, this is the this is the moment. We can use this. Now they're going to Ice Wall walk around, so there's no line of sight on the charge yet yep. until they, you know, go through this doorway. But they obviously know that this is the approach angle. You can see the checking going on right now for Nero. Yeah, Wally is going to be on the flank and try to drag him into the pit. Will be the Ice Block out from the Lizard, just waiting on that Dragon Strike. Happy, unable to find any kills with that one. Barrier coming down as Marvel falls low. Will be able to survive, but now there's a Supercharger in. As they get that whole pool up over the top. Shoe going to be going down, but Fitz and Marvel both going to be vanishing as the Lizard tries to have a 1v1 with Nero, but it's not quite a 1v1. They get a little bit of a chime in. Unfair fight, Elizabeth will lose. Does end up getting taken out there. The setup for the charge was pretty good, and they were able to identify Solus taking that left side angle using the ice wall. So there wasn't really much of a surprise there. Fitz did very little damage in that last fight, so nowhere near a Death Blossom. Interestingly, Happy gonna go over to the Bastion right now, and that's one way to break through the front line here that's so tanky and so self-sustainable. Dynasty gonna have to scout this early when they come through this doorway. It is, that barrier is not gonna last very long, Marvel. In fact, he's not even going to try to put it there. Yeah, gonna have to try to go for the main wall first, then into the barrier. D-Matrix, in fact, save the barrier as they get ready to move down onto the low ground. Happy just giving a nice little adjustment to make sure that he is ready. Sound barrier is available, and here's the wall to block. Maybe they could touch here and grab a tick. It's so difficult, though. Yeah. Trying to displace this. Very difficult. Now that's going to be the Ant Matrix in. Bomb goes up over the top. Immortality field. will get taken down by that. Fitz capitalize on top of Happy, getting rid of him. Toby, however, going to be frozen now. Nero coming up with one kill. There's the wall off Marvel in the back. Answering Blizzard. Thrown down now by Illicit. Nero will get locked up, taken out. Rio anti on the point and completely isolated. Will be finished off. First tick gonna be sacked here by the Soul Dynasty with still about three and a half minutes left in the time bank. Do they just close it out right here? 
Car gonna be dropping down. Doesn't last too long. We are so close to closing this one out. Hoppa barely manages to tag in for a little bit longer. The pile driver coming in now for Rio gets a pop up, but the mech is gonna be lost for Hoppa. The baby diva does not stand a chance. I expect that Rio as well will not against Fitz with this Reaper. They freeze him, they close it out. Cold Dynasty. Very strong start to Hanamura. I mean, can we talk about how difficult it was what they did there too? They scouted immediately the Bastion on the other side, ice wall up, go down using defense matrix, wrap around, set up a bomb play, while then Fitz at the same time teleports in after the immortality field is down, gets that opening kill onto the Bastion. That was nuts. Good stuff here for the Dynasty. Let's see how their defense fares. Coca-Cola is the official refreshment of the Overwatch League. Welcome back, 306 established in the time bank by the Soul Dynasty as they complete Hanamura. A very nice push and a very nice shutdown on the Bastion Bunker set up on that high ground. Go ahead and take a look at Jay Hong here in the final moments of this map. Yeah, I mean, he, he was obviously just great at shutting down these final moments for these players, especially that shot onto Happy. It means that Happy's not able to get his rocket punch in there, That's get some true. shields up and delay, etc. And now that Soul are on the defense, they're going to run the Variation here with the Sombra, which can make it very difficult for charge if they're operating around ultimates on the attack to really find their way in. But what you're missing, obviously, is the extra frontline sustain. So it's tough for Illicit now. He's going to have to really crush it against Guangzhou Charge's frontline if they decide to go the Reaper route. So far, it's the Hanzo. Don't worry, it's, everything's fine. The killers are panicking a little bit. But... Oh, Happy was like, I, hang on, there's a Sombra around here. He fits that moment of panic where he's like, I gotta get out. I gotta get the heck out of here. Doesn't manage to do so. He's gonna be spot on about the Sonic Arrow. Push up here on top of the door. Trying to snipe Fitz from above, who's just hovering in the back line. Has to hack there onto Nero, so he's unable to get into the ice block, but they don't have too much damage to actually threaten him. And it fits. Not really teleporting to the safest location, so we'll put that translocator a little bit further away from where the enemy team is at. Marvel, however, going to be taken down. There's no mercy here from the side of the Soul Dynasty, so nobody put it back to the fight. Shell frozen, but gets right back out of that one and will be able to take down Nero. EMP is ready. Chance. EMP is ready. The wall going to be dropped down. Three members hacked out. The Bionade layered in on top of it. Hot butt will get finished off. The front line broken down. And the shield finished off as well. So good initial holds here for the Soul Dynasty. Talk a lot about how the damage dealers need to really be in uh, communication with each other and in conjunction with each other in every move. If Elissa had not dropped that wall, you know, I mean, things could have ended up being very different. Oh, yeah. So, you know, you miss a translocator throw like that and everything could change in an instant. Okay. Jay Hong up here on the high ground. They actually have a really nice, can, you know, setup here where they could basically have a crossfire so that if the charge go in too far, they're going to get slapped because this is around the barrier. Point pressure being applied. Nero and Hap Rio, rather, have made their way over onto the point. Now Hoppa joining them. Jay Hong still sitting here at the top. We'll use that nano boost. Marvel's going to get cut off by the wall and is now hovering dangerously low. Doesn't have that adaptive shield for a little bit longer. This is 
now becoming available. It's a bit of damage. He doesn't get that much shielding. But Michelle with a whole hawk comes up into his charge too. Both gonna be taken down. No supports available for the Guangzhou charge. Now hot but dead. Michelle is on a killing spree in this game. Gets rid of Nero as well. What can this man not do? Oh my goodness. Single-handedly shuts him out, basically. And Elicit sets it up. Elicit before this match today. 80% oh, win rate in team fights when Blizzard is used. So taking a look at this again, gonna wrap around the back. We'll forgive the Hulk, but it's the whole Hulk set up here. Then when you go into the point later, the Blizzard comes down and he just flicks heads. Unreal stuff here from Michelle. Fantastically done. And those supports just weren't really ready for it. Going back into the action though, you can see Dynasty set up here onto the high ground. They'll start working their way through. One tick has been snagged by the Guangzhou charge. As soon as they come in, the EMP's ready. The EMP comes down, manages to catch three, but Shu is not one of them, so gets the Transcendence out, but it's still gonna be Rio taken down. I don't know, doing wonders here. And Spitz just looks for the next hack target. Can't quite find it, but Happy is taking a nap. Jay Hong coming up with a staple sleep dart onto that enemy Sombra. Soul Dynasty is just looking god tier in terms of coordination right now. Oh, uh -oh. over the wall! Uh, not problem. what I wanted, not what I wanted. <laughs> what Marvel is thinking right now. He should be able to get out though. Yeah, couldn't quite get that freeze onto him. Well, it's that drop back down, but he misses the pile driver! And now he just kind of delivers himself unto death. Uh, yeah, didn't get the grapple there, unfortunately. Mm. This is an, uh, an opportunity now for the charge. They're gonna come in. Oh yeah. Blizzard's set up. There's no D.Va, super he's, easy to drop it. He's rezzed, he's zipping his way back to the point as quickly as he possibly can, but in the meantime, the charge will be able to snag that second tick as we enter under 10 seconds. Drop down in from Illicit. Very dangerously close to having that Blizzard online. You're gonna be taken down, but trade out. Onto the enemy May as Elizabeth will fall. Hot Puck gonna be taken down now. Guangzhou Charge have to stay stuck to the point, but I don't think they can do it because Michelle is here and he is just chewing people apart. Pushes forward straight past that amp matrix, but still will get taken down. Focus Fire gets rid of the hog, but now the EMP comes in on both of these supports. If slivers of HP remaining, will get taken out. The Soul Dynasty looking to close out with a full hold here on Hanamura. Rio pushing forward, rejoining with a wrecking ball, trying to buy some time for Hoppa to get back in onto the point. Blizzard comes down, Nero goes into the ice block, the whole hog ready to go from Hot Pump, but he's hacked, he cannot use it. Can they finish him off in time before it comes through? So the answer is gonna be yes. They get rid of him, and now it's just cleanup duty for the Dynasty. There it is, the full hold. And now they move up 2-0 versus the Guangzhou Charge. Michelle walks away with the most damage in the server as well. I mean, insane plays from the hog across the board. 60% hook accuracy. The guy was on fire. The coordination looks good between the DPSs. Jay Hong's nanos, great. He's getting the kills. This looks like the Soul Dynasty we've been waiting for all season long. And finally, here in stage four, they have found their footing. A major resurgence here and a fantastic start to the series for the Dynasty. Let's see if they can close this out cleanly when we come back after halftime. The Overwatch League is powered by Intel. Game, record, stream without compromise on Intel Core i7. And by Omen by HP, the official PC and display of the Overwatch League.
The Dynasty are trying to find a way into the top six for the playoffs, and they look to be on a mission so far in this one. It's so up 2-0 over the Guanjo charge at the break. What's up, guys? The crew is back here at halftime. And let me say, guys, uh, the Soul Dynasty, they've been cooking so far in this match. They are who we thought they were. They look strong. Yeah, even though they're one and two in this stage so far, people still have them highly rated. When we're cooking up the power rankings yeah. in the behind the scenes, we all rated the Soul Dynasty still in the top 10. And the reason for that is, even though they lost games against the Shock and the Shanghai Dragons, they still looked pretty good, and now they're showing it. Right, you, you said it, quality losses earlier. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump into the highlights, starting off with Elios. Uh, the Dynasty were able to come ahead with this map, but for a lot of it, I feel like the charge gave them a pretty good run for their money. Yeah, it was a close series overall. I mean, in the end of it, what got the better of the charge was honestly Seoul having the better uh, sort of coordination and teamwork. Like, it feels like the Guangzhou charge, to point that I, I've kind of been cooking up in my own head as, as well as I've been watching them is that they get the wins against a lot of the weaker teams because they've got very mechanically gifted players. You've got Hopper who, who's you know, he's always on point with the Roadhog or the Diva and Nero and Happy are a very formidable DPS duo, damage dealing duo. But overall, the one thing that they kind of neglect in some ways that Seoul really go all out on is the coordination. And Seoul have really kind of worked out what they want to do in a lot of these team fights. And you can tell that the calling structure is really good as well. Uh, just based on the way that they use all their cooldowns effectively. Uh -huh. yeah. uh, Hanamo is the, great, the greatest example of this, honestly, as we watch that as we jump back into it. But overall, that's really what's separating these two teams. And Seoul are proving that you don't need highly mechanical players to really get ahead in, right now in this meta. Yeah, I mean, the May Reaper composition has been such a formidable style for the Soul Dynasty. They were the first team to really start running a lot of it with Fitz on the Reaper, and he's really uh, maybe still not pioneering that style, but was a couple of weeks ago, and is still getting huge value out of it against the less coordinated teams, like apparently the Charge. Right, it's very interesting, because I feel like the Soul Dynasty, the first thing we've seen with the lineup this big, that's utilizing it the right way. And they're postulating every little thing, like the cooldown times, like you mentioned, Brent. It's really cool. And uh, we saw more of that moving on to Hanamura, where this one was pretty lopsided, in my opinion. I felt oh, like yeah. the Dynasty it, just cooked yeah, them. It was a bit of a up. roll. Yeah, it was a bit of a roll, wasn't it? And, and this is where Soul really just took it by storm. You can tell in a lot of the ways they use stuff, the charge, they, they tried a decent attempt of it. You can see this here. Great set play by Soul, recognizing what have they got available to them. Okay, we've got the South Destruct, we've got Fitz as well, we've got a Nana Boost. So they coordinate everything. They know the South Destruct is gonna absolutely bust open whatever they try and use to mitigate it. And they clean up off the back of it. It's it's using everything they've got at disposal and recognizing the win conditions in these fights that makes Seoul such a good team. And that was instant reaction as well. As soon as they saw that Guangzhou Charge were posted up there, they knew how to break it immediately. There was no improvising on the fly to set strat, set plan. They break it quickly. And then when they're on the defense, they again looked fantastic. They completely demolished. Michelle just wanders around the map and gets a 5k here. But, you know, who knows what reason. That, that's just how you play Roadhog. But the team looks oh, clinical. you play Roadhog. That's how I play Roadhog. I wander around the map and hope people feed into it. <laughs> just whole hog into the distance. <laughs> exactly. Hopefully you hit somebody. All right, well, we mentioned earlier how important this match is for both of these teams. For the Guangzhou Charge, they're still trying to make it into our top 12 to the playoffs and lock that spot in. And for the Seoul Dynasty, they're already in, but they're trying to make the top six. And so this match is actually pretty huge for them. Um, uh, what do you guys think, like, for the Dynasty? Is this a must-win match for them, in your opinion? If they're going to try and make roads into the top six, yes, absolutely. I mean, you can see there they're just on the outside. We're possibly expecting Spark to drop outside of that top six. Yeah. The other teams in there look pretty solid at the moment. You wouldn't expect many other people to, to be dropping out of it. But the, between them and Guangzhou, I mean, Guangzhou are the ones who are more desperate, honestly. Yeah. Because they need to get into that top 12. And before this, they were looking pretty hot. I mean, three and one coming into this was great. But you can see that they're maybe more of a gatekeeper team. They're, they're on that cutoff. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of the weaker teams in general as well are going to be falling to them. Now, against the Excelsior, I don't know what to expect in that one. They, New York have not looked particularly grand yeah. when it comes to this metagame. Fuel as well. It, it's just been a case of just disappointment, a case yeah. study in that. So, I mean, Guangzhou Charge are still looking to be in a good place, even if they lose this series right. here. But you can definitely see the, the skill gap, at least, between them and a lot of these other teams. Yeah, I mean, it said, right, there's a 71.4% chance of them still making the top 12. So don't despair if you're a Charge fan. But that was assuming that they had a good chance in this game. They were right. predicted to win based on the ELO models that we have. And they're predicted to win the game against New York. Now, the ELO is all over the place, as are our predictions, because it's stage four, brand new meta, brand new... Uh, 
kind of system with roll lock, so it could still slip away for the Guangzhou Charge. This important game, the one against New York, very important game. Indeed, indeed. Now, uh, moving into Kings Row, do you think the Charge have an opportunity to get back into this game? Maybe. I mean, it, it depends on how well they can really coordinate now as well. It was what it comes down to. But there's always a possibility that we see Happy really pop off as well on the Hanzo. Right. Like, Kings Road, it actually seems like a good map for Guangzhou. I, I'm not yeah. going to rule them out of this series just yet. But from what we've seen so far, Seoul looked like the more dominant team, especially that Hanamoa match. Incredibly one sided. All right. Well, I can't wait to see what happens. But, guys, you heard what I said. We've got Kings Road coming up for map three. And there's a good chance we might see more of the honor god himself, Ryu Jehong, or his signature hero. He recently joined us to break down all the setups and strategies that make him one of the most respected honor players in the history of competitive Overwatch. This is Game Set, presented by Omen by HP. There it is! Oh, that hurts so much! Hello, I'm Seo. I'm Seo Dynasty's Ryu Jeong. My nickname is Ryu Jeong. I'm using Ryu Jeong as my nickname. 저는 서포트 외에 좀 딜러 개념으로 쓸 수도 있을 거라고 보고 있고요. 왜냐면 정말 스케일도 너무 좋고. 감도 같은 경우는 400 DPI에 4.29. 제가 크로스웨어를 점으로 쓰게 된 이유는 오버워치 같은 경우는 어떻게 보면 총의 반동이라는 게 필요 없이 그 이제 가운데만 쏘면은 적한테 피해를 줄수 있기 때문에 안나 세팅에 대해서 뭐 특별한 거는 토글 줌을 오늘 하고 스코프 감도 같은 경우도 조정을 해서 사용을 하고 있고 또 이제 나노 부스터 이 덱을 하게 되면은 이 가운데가 없어요 무조건 왼쪽에 뜨든 오른쪽에 뜨든 그래가지고 이거를 좀더 세밀하게 실수를 안 하기 위해서 제가 감도 같은 경우를 낮춰서 50으로 사용하고 있고요 저희 편한테 제가 힐러로서 힐을 주려고 할 때는 스코프보다는 스코프를 쓰지 않고 그냥 힐을 주고요. 이제 적 팀이나 아니면 저희 팀이 정말 멀리에 있을 때 그때는 스코프를 쓰고 해줌 같은 경우는 뭐 제가 어저 정말 저 적을 확실하게 맞출 수 있을 때 감이 잡힐 때만 쓰고 나노 부스트를 주는 제일 우선 순위는 탱커 쪽에서는 뭐 라인 아르트가 있으면 라인 아르트고 겐지는 어느 때 쓰든 상관이 없어요. 뭐 수비적으로 쓰든 공격적으로 쓰든 겐지 혼자서 다할수 있기 때문에 살기 위해서 쓸 때는 상대방 이제 윈스턴이나 딜러들이 뛰었을 때 어차피 생체 수류탄이 저희 팀이나 저한테 맞추면은 이제 그거를 이용해서 제가 체력이 반 이상 까였을 때 상대 팀이 물러왔을 때 같이 맞출 수 있을 때 같이 맞추고요. 수면청 같은 경우는 그냥 상대가 이렇게 보일 때 어디로 가겠구나 제가 혼자 생각을 해서 근데 맞아가지고. <웃음> 저희 영상을 봐주셔서 정말 감사드리고요. 저희 영상을 보고 나서 좋은 안나 플레이어가 되시기를 정말 바라고. It's best not to question how j h o n g does what j h o n g does on Ana. Just accept it.
I'm very disappointed in the comms thing last week, by the way. How do you make a comms video without featuring Cruz's idiotic... Idiotic, mate. Can you speak, you speak English, mate? Idiotic? Yeah. Really? Yeah. It's not open mic. It's comms mic. Oh, oh, mic comms? Ah, oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, now we know. Concept. You're never, you're never going to get a sound bite of me saying it correctly. <laughs> What's going on? Yo! Boy, boy, check, boy, check! Nico! Nico, Nico! Nico, Nico! Nico, Nico! Oh, God! Oh, oh, you're too loud! I like how when people say you're vicely low, people's immediate they reaction put it in, in their mouth, dude. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah! Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, it was just. Oh! oh. <laughs> this was. <laughs> Oh, I broke a 3, 2, 1. Fighting! Fighting! Roar, you're Kenji. Roar, switch heroes. Oh my god. Oh, so close. I can see the ref behind Roar. He was watching Roar. You're on camera. In a nasty dab. Put on, okay. Now we focus on the game again, okay? Yeah. yeah. No, no happiness for now. Whoa, what? Uh, no, no, no happiness. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what yeah. do you mean? <laughs> Play with this pair. <gasps> but, uh, I headshot the Genji. It's. <laughs> oh, fat man. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Uh. All right, welcome back, guys. We are halfway through this set, the Salt Dynasty. Looking good, starting things off with a 2 0 lead. Close it out. That is the question you and I already had a reverse sweep earlier on. How about a second one? It doesn't feel likely, you know, no. going into this one right now that we will see a reverse sweep, but only time will tell. Soul Dynasty, as the uh, analyst on the halftime show pointed out earlier, looking pretty clean right now with Fitz on the Reaper. Elicits May. Uh, I mentioned it earlier, Captain Planet gave me the stat that leading up until this match, 80% team, uh, team fight win rate in uh, Blizzard fights. Anytime he uses a Blizzard, it's like an 8 out of 10, you're winning that fight, which is massively ahead of the average. 34% ahead of the average, in fact. So, looking good for Dynasty right now in this meta. Super solid start for this series here. We'll see how they fare now that we move into King's Rogacy Charge. I have the better record overall, but that is through some different uh, iterations of the meta three, three. so this map is often decided by dragon strikes in a lot of team fights because of the narrow choke points very much similar to how when Rialto was first released we saw a lot of Hanzo there for the same reason so it's about the Hanzos in a lot of ways in terms of success rate with those fights but it's also about the immortality fields and the Batistes we'll see the May Reapers start here for the Soul Dynasty. See if Charge can outpoke them here as they sweep around the left side. Not surprising start. Going to be set up there on that high ground Rio saying, nope, I'm just going to go ahead and get ready now. What? Not to give away any free percent here. Alpha still has a decent back angle that he's playing on. Isn't getting pressure, but will still wrap around with the rest of the team. Thought maybe he would try to hover there. Said it's just going to be Soul Dynasty charging forward, get rid of Rio, and then Immortality Field. Alpha still will be able to find one, but a tick is going to be snagged by the Soul Dynasty. So still somewhat decent start for them as Hoppa gets frozen up and taken down. Here we'll be able to find Jayhawk. It's a really nice still wall for Melissa. He's looking for that poke once you poke his head up just a little bit more. He's not able to do so. And Nero is somewhere just off killing supports. There he is. Got rid of both Jayhawk and Toby. And now Marvel will be eliminated. Decent first push here for the Soul Dynasty as they get up to 77% just about. Yeah, they're about to have a Blizzard. Nero and Alyssa tied right now in Ult Charge, so we'll have two in this next fight potentially, depending on how the setup starts here. And the Dragon Strike can pair with that. We're going to take a look really quick um, at the support kills here just from behind. Nero was just up here the entire time. No one could contest him. But in this next fight, we're going to see Dragon Strike coming out from Happy. Sorry about that. Yeah, back in. Blizzard going to be coming down now. Marvel going low. Just going to get melted. As well as Fitz and Illicit. 
And that was the Soul Dynasty Blizzard used as well. Yeah, so, that's unfortunate. I mean, they, team wipe. they held the Dragon Strike, so I was technically a liar. Uh, but uh, otherwise, this is a pretty efficient fight. They keep both support ultimates here. And now Soul Dynasty, things are looking pretty dire. You might even want to consider a swap to Batiste here. You want the sound barrier for Toby, but like, oh, uh, this isn't looking good. Jay Hong on a You'll secret mission here into the back. We'll be able to throw that Nana Boost down. Dragon Strike goes in. Marvel takes so much damage from that one. Not going to be eliminated yet, though, but Fitz can't get much done with that Nana Boost. And oh my god, he's sending the orbit. Shu taking him down. Is it hovering here below? Looking for the freeze on Nereo, but it's just taking so much damage. Nero manages to come out on top. And suddenly, like you said, dire is kind of the word that comes to mind because we're down to a minute and a half. Yeah, and remember too that even though Fitz is almost to that Death Blossom, getting onto the point to use it, but there's not a whole lot of high ground he can operate around. He can't really teleport into a flank angle to get a big uh, Death Blossom on. It's so obvious. They even have to use the wall to try to close this gap. It's really tough here, unless there's a big mistake on the side of the charge. Now Fitz, if he can get an opening kill, that's what they're really looking for right now. Then he can look for the Death Blossom usage. There's no D.Va to block it. Gotta be careful, though. Looking for the wall, gonna be coming up. Now to a minute now. Supercharger gonna be used by Rio. Hop up. Taking a nap for now. See, he has it now, Fitz does. But getting in here, how how is that gonna happen? How is that going to work? It's just such a hard thing to do. I think he's gotta wait until they come over to the point. Set though, they do go Barrier. for it. Now Barrier gonna be coming in, the Blizzard gonna be thrown down. Mortality field gonna be taken out. Blizzard managed to find one, but happy answers back for two. Marvel and Fitz both gonna be eliminated by that Dragon Strike, but it seems like the damage is done. The Soul Dynasty are on the point. They get the cap that with was, three minutes remaining now. That was such a great play by Toby. They, they trusted, Soul Dynasty trusted that if they got into position there, they could bait the trance. And then Toby knew in that moment during the trance, if he barriers, and Fitz can get this ultimate to work. He can actually make it happen in Blizzard. So a lot of commitment there from Soul Dynasty to make it work, but it works brilliantly. They're very weak in terms of time bank, however. So, you know, this is the first success of many they'll need here on this push. They're already down on ultimates because they had to commit so much to that fight. Yeah, and Matrix, whole hog. And the Blizzard available for the side of the Guangzhou charge. Move up around the first corner here. All to come through, and that's going to be the Ant Matrix thrown in the window up top. Bionade connects on a four members, but they have the Immortality field. The charge still feeling comfortable to stick around. Yeah, like up top. Immortality field can outlast that. And now they can just drop down, and they're going to get back control of this archway. Look at the catch onto Marvel, isolated. This is amazing for charge because now they have, essentially they're playing for A again with an archway to work for, to work with, excuse me. Happy, knowing that they're not running Batiste feels really good about just tossing out some straight arrows here to get that ult charge because when there's no immortality field, you can see the power of the dragon strike. We've seen it now twice from him having big impact in these fights. Don't even need the blizzard for it to get value in these choke points, especially this archway they control. Karn starting to roll back just a bit. Start pushing forward again now here. So Charge not really fighting for this corner. Just allowing Dynasty to push forward. They know that this window up top is a very good position for them. Mortality field going to be taken down. The Nando was thrown in on the fence. Whole hogs out from Hotma, but he's going to be taking a nap. And Rio will be eliminated. Blizzard comes in now for Nero. Dragon Strike is here on a Marvel. Both Reese is going to be gone as Chara gets himself a double kill. He doesn't even need it. He doesn't even need the strike. Yep, and just go ahead and hold it. Nero was so composed too in that moment when the, the self-destruct came out, a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of May players would have dropped the Blizzard there knowing that there's no way to absorb it. But he actually waited for a more ideal fight after the self-destruct had already gone off, you can still get it up while the remac is going on, and he drops it in a great place, waits till the last second so the, the rest of the team can commit with him, and Chara pulls the double. That was a great fight, extremely ult efficient, as Happy still holds that Dragon Strike. He's not gonna use it in this choke, he wants to use it on the point itself to contest that final moment in overtime. Wall goes up, Dragon Strike coming through, straight down the lane. We'll zone them back for the moment. The supercharger set up onto the high ground. We'll get killed off. Elicit, amplifying the angle. To snipe that one down. Hulk comes in, pulls them together. Blizzard gonna be out from Elicit. They need to capitalize right now. The freeze is there on to Hoppa, trying to finish him off. We'll be able to do so. Shoot, sliver of HP. 
They'll get some of that shielding to come back in, but now it's looking like an overtime push into B for the Soul Dynasty. Guangzhou charge. So many staggers coming in on the back end of this. Can they contest this? Critical to note in that last fight too, Jaehyung slept Shu, so he couldn't Transcendence there. If he had been able to use Transcendence during that Blizzard, we'd be looking at a completely different fight. But that's a great moment there. You know he's got the trance. They need this time desperately. Fitz, will he teleport to the top? That's a risky decision. A lot of Reapers won't make that choice. He's going to do it. Get the audio cue and should know. Have they definitely up know. Up top. They've got to know at this point. Oh, he's waving, so <laughs> he's acknowledging that they know. He's going to be waiting as patiently as he can. Mana boost is ready. Gets tossed in. Fits on the drop. Bandages to find happy. Still holding on to that death blossom. We'll see how long he wants to hold it for. Just wait until they get closer to the end, it would seem. He bled on Rio down. Now he's chasing. He's being for The wall comes up. Nero as well going to be using that. Great walk is ready. So Fitz can go ahead and exit safely as Illicit plays forward. Going to catch somebody else off guard. Card being brought up by the support duo at the moment. Fred Sentences iris. out from Shu. Pushing his weight through, hot butt gonna be eliminated. There's no defense matrix available for the th this death blossom, but Fitz decides to use it. It's gonna be used now. She's gonna be taking down the sound barrier a little bit too late for Toby to try to get the reaper in the fight. Charge has managed to find one, but now Nero is gonna be gone. Cannot use that blizzard. Dynasty have one of their own. Michelle comes up with a double kill with the self-destruct, and they will be able to finish King's Row with time in the bank, I believe about 23 seconds. Remember too, this was after a really weak time bank on A and an overtime finish on B, so suddenly Suddenly, Soul Dynasty, dominant performance from Fitz, takes the risky teleport on the high ground, gets picks without using the Death Blossom. You just see ice walls for days. It's all a full hold on Hanamura. Do we get another one here? Let's find out with the Guangzhou attack. Coca-Cola is the official refreshment of the Overwatch League. And welcome back, Soul Dynasty, able to make it to the end of King's Row with 23 seconds to spare. And now we will get ready to see how they fare on the defense as the Guangzhou Charge get ready to go on the attack. Late night here in Los Angeles, nearly hitting 11 p.m. In this series, for it to go later, for it to go the distance, Guangzhou are going to have to have a good push here. Soul Dynasty not running the uh, the Batiste on the attack, but they will run it on the defense here. They're not going to fall victim to Happy's potential Hanzo. He will start the Widow, as you will normally on attack, look for a pick. And knowing there's no enemy Widow on the other side, you can keep this longer, and he is going to look for that angle over the barrier here. Fortunately, no headshot. Well, <laughs> yep, didn't fire it the first time, but as soon as the barrier goes down, I jinxed he, him. Uh, he gets the next one. Sorry, Illicit. <laughs> Oh, now pushing forward, Bionade goes through Immortality Field. Keeping Marvel alive for a little bit longer, but now Toby gonna get picked off. They drag Jay Hong forward, Immortality Field will get taken down. And so will the Ana. Happy just coming up with more snipes there into the back line. Just get the pop out onto Michelle's Mac the Dragon on the fits. And the take on point A. 
Guangzhou charge very comfortably set up with a massive time bank for this second phase of King Yeah, Pro. I mean, it doesn't get much better than this. You get that opening pick onto the Mei. And the cool thing about that is, too, Mei kind of acts as a tank in this meta and has a lot of CC. You take her out early, so it's so easy to flip the point because you're going to win that frontline battle. But also, you've eliminated her ability to build ult charge on the defense, so she's nowhere near a Blizzard. Yeah. Been further behind there. Is Alyssa happy going to be forced off the high ground for now, but has the infrasight. Yeah. All right, you know what? I could probably just go straight back over the side. Michelle, you could see him looking. He's yeah. like, I'm not going to let this happen. But after he scouts and fails, Ooh. nearly took down Jay Hong there. Let them a bit more charge on that attack. That would have been one dead on a Bionades out from both sides, hitting two members each. Marvel still falling dangerously low, precariously. So we'll get top back up as the Ant Matrix from the charge expires. Dynasty still going to be able to play quite far forward. As they now have a Nano Boost ready to go. Now, with Toby swapping over to Lucio, Happy's going to swap over to the Hanzo. So if he can build a Dragon Strike, that might be their best way to break out of this archway. They don't have control at the moment. Nero's got a Blizzard. And, you know, if that's not eaten, there's a really good way. That's another great way to set up a fight here. Guys, we got to be really cautious about playing a wild Bio. Diva. Bio Nate does manage to catch on to three. The Nano going to be tossed down on a fence. And the fight shoot. We'll get frozen on top of the car. And there is the eight. Michelle is able to come up with it, takes that away from Nero. Crucially done. Very big moment for Michelle. Comes up clutch. And the swap for Happy just doesn't find value in that fight. He built 17% of his ultimate, so he's gonna swap over to the Reaper, and they're just gonna have to settle on mirroring this composition. As many teams I think we will see in the coming weeks who aren't running this will have to learn to do, because this is the strongest meta or the strongest thing to play in this meta in close spaces. Now who's coming down the wall, goes up. Alyssa trying to cut people off, now throws in the Blizzard. Happy gonna have to use the Wraith Walk just to try to make it out of there without getting frozen, so the Nano effectively gonna be wasted on the side of the charge. Good shutdown here from the Soul Dynasty, as they will be able to get a stagger here onto Hot, but pushing him back to the other side of the archway and blocking him off. So frustrating if you're a Diva to get stuck like this. Yep. Happy doing very little damage again on his swap because of the blizzard, gets frozen early. You can't use a Hanzo here without ultimate because you don't have sight lines. You can't break through the barrier. And Solar are just going to even operate around this right side here so they can't sit. So Nero can't even build blizzard charge with his right clicks. And if you commit in, you're going to get frozen first. And walls up from both sides. Supercharge are going to be placed on the other side of the Guangzhou charges main wall. Will get finished off as the bomb comes out. Hoppa looking for a pick is unable to find anything. And Charge is going to be taken down. Jay Hulk finding the shot while keeping everybody else alive as best as possible. It's still going to be taken down. The Blizzard now out from Nero, looking for a token. Nano boost is available. He could use the Boostio here just to try to keep him alive, but does not do so. Instead, he'll just keep spamming away, throw down that Bionade, and keep Toby in the fight. Absolutely Alison crazy. Will receive that. Nano boost pushes forward. Walls off Nero. They clean him up. Soul Dynasty look entrenched on the other side of this archway right now. I mean, you pointed it out. j Hong could have nanoed there. Anyone could have, but he had faith in his abilities. He knew he was going to keep everybody healed. He knew he had that bio grenade available, and he turned that fight. You know, he didn't need to use it there at the end, but he used it just to be safe. But it's just insanely impressive to see how long he kept them alive there with Toby in that room with the amplified healing. Rio's asleep here. Yep. We'll be woken, and now for this next push. All they have is the nano boost. Balls coming out again. The supercharger are going to be thrown down. A lot of damage there on the marble, but he's going to be surviving for a little bit longer. This time it's Hoppa, who comes up with the eat on the blizzard, takes that one away from Elicit. It's going to be taken down, but so is Happy. And now Elicit will be joining him in the grave. Both damage dealers on the side of the dynasty, losing out here in this fight. Still playing quite far forward, but not going to be able to last too long here as Jae Hong will get taken down. Gonna hold the cart in place as long as they possibly can, then wait for the respawns to come through and recontest in front of me. Let's remember too that Soul Dynasty were in the same situation with overtime and we're able to finish the map. It's absolutely doable. If you have a few clutch fights, you can control this zone here. Happy misses the death loss, but he does not have that, that they were able to, of course, take B and then take C with Soul Dynasty. So that's one tool that is missing as we head into this next fight. Pitts is just gonna wait. A nice little wave, still going to be playing down low here. Trio pushes forward, uses that supercharger. Nano. Another sound barrier coming in. The supercharger does not stand a chance. Fitz just waiting for some of that shielding to expire. Uses the Wraith Walk. 
That was a bit stranded. Should he try to go for the Death Blossom? Instead, we'll just push forward here. Trying to take down Shu. Bionate is there. He's also got the Mega Pack. So will not be able to find the catch, but he's done about the fight for a considerable amount of time. Yeah, that's huge. There's no healing. Marvel trying to stay alive. Will get taken down, but the Death Blossom comes in. So both the wrist is going to be traded for as, sound, as that self-destruct goes in. No pick to be found for a hot butt. Makes his way back into the back, and Illicit will get cleaned up. Is happy. Gets that mana boost. This time, finding a lot of value. They're going to be holding for a little bit longer, but they will go ahead and finish off the remaining members of the Dynasty. So? 150 in the time bank for the charge. Happy has the Death Blossom and the High Ground, just like Fitz did now, as they do capture B. So history can repeat itself here, potentially. Soul Dynasty, though, is not getting spawn camp yet. They will have one more chance to contest. The question is, do they know where Happy is? They found him. Michelle's found him here. It's a pretty common spot for a Reaper to hide. They spot him out. Takes a lot of damage. He's been plays up there onto the high ground with him. Bionate helps chuck him down. And Wraith Walk was already used, so Michelle is able to get the kill. Is there anything Jay Hong can't do? I mean, really? I mean, really? Uh, I don't know. I mean, he just put it, that was just straight through. Nothing but net. That bio grenade. He's got a nano up. Got the sleep on the Rio as well. This guy is playing like a man possessed right now, and it shows. It shows in the performance here. This next fight for Guangzhou Charge, they could try to use this Blizzard, but they don't have a positional advantage. The walls up, trying to cut them off. Bionate goes in. Marvel going to be taken down. Solid start here for the Guangzhou Charge. There's Happy gets right in on top of Illicit. Manages to come up with a double kill. Round the final corner. And critically here, Achilles, they don't have to use those ultimates, so they can use them to control the spawn. Here comes Happy with a teleport. Yeah, pushes his way forward. Bionate does anti him from the mo for a moment, but still has that Wraith Walk available as Marvel tries to play outside. Death Blossom going to be dumped right here. At the spawn exit, Sound Barrier now coming through. Alyssa going to be taking an app, still has that Blizzard. He's over onto the side of the point, makes it into the Ice Block, but now they need to make it over onto the card. Barely manages to do so as that Blizzard comes in, but they kill off the May and will be able to glide through to the end. Guangzhou charge down to the wire, but they get through it at the end. 19 seconds was the time. Extremely close time bank between these two squads. Four seconds, the difference. Absolutely crazy. Well, let's see what happens as we enter into OT rounds. Limited time, Banks. We'll see who comes out on top. And here we go. One minute to one minute and three seconds for the Soul Dynasty. Neck and neck. As we get ready to move into these overtime rounds, because of the slight little advantage that they have, the Dynasty will begin on the defense. Most situations on King's Row where both teams get a minute, uh, which is essentially what we have here, end up in draws in metas like this with the stall potential that there is. And that's something that Guangzhou cannot afford right now. A draw will cause them to lose this series. So they really need this attack to go well. They need to get at least a tick here. So they have that win potential, that win condition. Otherwise, the series is over. Well, last time when they just went on their attack, it was uh, pretty one-sided. They made it happen very quickly on the back. I'm happy coming up with several snipes so far. You can see Dynasty playing uh, a bit more respectfully towards that. But Marvel gets pulled in. The wall comes up perfectly, however, from Alyssa to keep it protected so they can top him back up. Bionate now connecting onto three on the side of the Dynasty, and Fitz gets frozen and taken down. Toby trying to lob in that immortality field, but now he doesn't have it with the play down here at the bottom. So Which greedy. Means that it is just going to be easy pickings here for the rest of the charge to take down these members of Soul. Wasn't trying to say alive, but dead the moment he comes out of the ice block. And that will be the cap here on to A for the charge. So greedy from Fitz to try to challenge a May. If you hit the headshots, you win the fight, you kill the May, and you're in a great position. You're behind the enemy team. But if you die, you've given up the point. And essentially, this map, barring something crazy here, because now it's a free push through the archway because of the late respawn time coming through there onto Illicit, who had to buy time on the point. The rest of his team to respawn. They still get through the archway for free. He's leading in terms of Blizzard charge. But right now for the charge, you're feeling like, okay, this map is winnable. All we need is an okay defense. Now we have got this in the bag. It's moving back down. 
the rest of his team. Cart just barely through the archway, but that's going to be the pull in onto Marvel. Nano thrown down on defense. Will be able to get rid of that immortality field. It's a lot more than that. Those are going to be thrown in by Nero. They managed to find one. As Rio does get eliminated. Can they get the rest of the cleanup here? Hot, but now going to be anti to Frozen. Taken down. And they zone them off the cart long enough for the OT to take away. All you need now is the full hold if you're Guangzhou, if you want to fight your way back into this series. Pretty good stabilizing there from Seoul Dynasty after the point was controlled and they lost the archway. Jaehong, by the way, leading 4,000 points of healing over Shu and the Ana v. Ana. That's a pretty massive lead. So over half of his team's damage healed at 53%. That's an incredible stat. Guy's been on point. His bio grenades have been amazing, both offensively, but mostly defensively on King's Row. And he might just close this out for his team. But it's going to have to be a great defense here for Charge. It's only a minute and three seconds they need to, to really block this with. And, you know, you felt like maybe this is a draw, maybe the series ends here moments ago. But now, I feel like your chances are pretty good as long as you don't make a critical mistake, as long as you don't challenge a Mei with a Hanzo or something like that, right? That's what just happened to Fitz. It still needs to be an improved attack. You know, compared to the first one, was a bit slow for this whole dynasty. Got a lot, a lot of, you know, two ticks, I believe, on that first push. But then we're held off time and time, time again yeah. for a very long time. The clock got drained out. Cannot afford to have that. They need to push out. They need to get the cap pretty much instantly here. They're going right into the May Reaper versus the Hanzo here from Happy, knowing that building a Dragon Strike isn't guaranteed right now with the short amount of time they have. They're worried about winning that first fight in the neutral before ultimates. That's the ideal scenario for Soul. Always have to respect how quickly Happy can build that up. He is uh, one of the best that we have here in the league. There comes up as Marvel tries to keep himself protected, but Hotba snatches Fence out, takes him down. Marvel struggling to try to stay alive. Sleep Dart goes forward. Gets the connection there on the shoe. Getting rid of one support on the side of the charge, at least for now. Marvel still under fire, has to pull back. 20 seconds remaining. Taehyung's gonna have to go to the flank. They're gonna try to nano boost Illicit. You have to imagine, that's their only real hope here. He's so far from a blizzard. What's, what choice will he make? Let's see, we're getting down to the wire. He's walled blocked, out. Blocked. Can't see anything. Marvel goes low. It's just to keep him top up. Nano gonna be thrown down. Not sure if that's what he wanted. I think he might have wanted to give that one over to Fitz. But Marvel has kind of dove do do in front of it. Mortality field gonna get cleaned up. Marvel going low, trying to stay alive. Another barrier coming down. He's gonna get cut off with the rest of his team. He can't dodge around it. That shield to keep himself alive. Blizzard comes in from Illicit. Zones him back off the point, at least for now. But it's just so many losses on the side of the Soul Dynasty. The OT ticks away. The Guangzhou charge will be able to hold them in OT, putting a map win on the board. Great plays from the Guangzhou charge, and they had that absolutely controlled by Shu, the Discord orbs. We had the Transcendence come through. We'll never know if Jaehong wanted to hit that nano boost onto the Arisa or not. I talked about how he's got low sensitivity for that. He doesn't like to make mistakes. I feel like it was deliberate, but it, it didn't end up being the right choice. Either way, charge on the board. Let's see if they can continue the momentum for the next map. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile, now connecting 99% of Overwatch League fans. Catch your league on America's network, T-Mobile. Don't you wait. I'm sorry. 
Welcome back. Potentially one more map to be played here. Guangzhou Charge have finally gotten themselves on the board after that victory on King Taro, but still are looking for a reverse sweep to extend us into a map five. We'll see if they can close out on Escort to make that happen. Yeah, I mean, this is a, a, a scenario where when we head into this next map, the Charge perform well. They can shift the momentum back. We've already seen it once today. You see it a lot in esports, you know, no matter what game you're talking about. When one team has a massive lead and it starts to slip away, that gets into your head. And it gives your opponent this incredible feeling yeah. of, I've got this, I can do this, this is this is possible. Whereas, you know, leading into King's Row, you might not have felt that way if you were the charge. We do have a substitution here. Fleta will be stepping in for this old dynasty as Fitz will be subbed out. So this is a pretty unusual choice, you know. I mean, we've seen Fleta subbed in uh, less than Fitz, obviously, in this stage. But we, given how well they've been playing all day long, even that last King's Row map was a really good map for them with this current DPS duo. It's surprising to see Fleta come in as we head into Route 66. The, the wonder is, the question is, what sort of heroes will we be seeing from Fleta? Because again, he and Elicit often overlap in their hero pools. So this is a bit of a unique substitution. And I think we'll, you know, we'll just have to wait and find out. There's nothing we can predict about exactly how it's all going to go down until the map opens. Yeah, we'll see. Maybe they have something special prepared here as we do get ready to move in. Like I said, what could be the final map? I got one of those feelings here, clawing at the back of my brain, saying, you know what? It smells it's like a map be, five. It's going to be another map five. Maybe not the full reverse sweep, but I think we're at least going to be forced into another round of control. But I mean, I, if I, I get I'm looking forward wrong. to it, you know, if we get it. I always love close 10 series that end on a dramatic control map that goes to the third round. But I do, uh, you know, I'm thinking about this a little bit further. And I do feel like the one thing that Fleta has over Fitz in a lot of these situations is his Widow is a lot more consistent, even though in the past, right, Fleta has been, you know, last year he was pretty decent on Widow at the beginning of the season, fell off a little bit. When you look at the matchups right now, I mean, you need Illicit to be in, so you can't sub him out for Fleta. And so therefore, like, they have this extra potential for Widow. It's King's Row, or excuse me, it's Route 66 as the map. So that beginning of the map, you know, it doesn't always become that important, but in the middle where you're controlling high ground and you're as the defensive widow, you've got an advantage, or as the attacking team, you're trying to flank with the widow. These things do really add up and they end up being super impactful. We saw soon almost single-handedly carry Paris to victory earlier today on this very map through the Widowmaker. But when you've got a list on the lineup, you still need to have May. You still need to have the potential to play May. So when you have Fleta and Elicit together. I think you have a little bit of a wider range of heroes you can play depending on the situation. I just need to make sure that the synergy is going to be built up there. You're kind of mentioning Nero and Happy, how well they play together. So we'll see if we can have a similar performance now that Fleta is in alongside Illicit. As we stated, Route 66 is the next map here as we move into Escort. And as the Guangzhou Charge look to continue towards that reverse sweep. There were some shaky moments for Fitz on the Hanzo, too, to be fair, uh, especially there on King's Row. Remember his challenge there on to the May is actually what uh, ended up causing them to lose point A on that overtime round. So right now we do see Fleta locked into the Hanzo. Now obviously, especially once we head into uh, the streets phase or basically you know, from point A after it's captured to, to B. That's where you can really see the Widow swap take place. Happy's gonna start on the Widow. Well, I suppose we'll do so now. I figured he'd at least shot, try one shot. But it's gonna be a mirror. Yep. Holds over to the side. Not gonna be able to find anything. We're trying to drag. We're trying to drag Fleta out into the open to perhaps take him down. Good for that high ground contest. Is spotted by the Sonic Arrow. Pushes up over the top. Both Hanzo's taking some tags. We'll go ahead and peel back for now. Happy does it. 
grab the high ground for the moment. Cart starting to inch forward, looking for that pull in. Marble's still gonna be taken down, despite the wall stopping that yoink. There's no mercy when you have twos in y'all. There's both sides. Any pick, any hook, it's over for that target in almost every scenario because you're gonna get discorded and you're gonna get blown up. Even if the wall's up there, it needs to be lightning fast, and sometimes even that isn't enough. You've already taken too much damage. Another pull that's gonna be listed now. Gone. There's a Kongsho charge. Living up to the Archons. name right now, aren't they? Yeah, they are uh, They're charging through there. Steamrolling their way right now. So Already coming past Big Earls. Can Soul contest this without a blizzard, without really any means to come through this, this choke point, this doorway? I, I'm feeling no. I mean, it's really risky. If you're going to commit to this, you're going to give Nero a blizzard. If you fail, they're already scouted by the Sonic Arrow. Oh, man. Strike coming in, Michelle. Pull through, taken down now. And Marvel eliminated. So that will just be the event. Five minutes to go for this second phase, as Jay Hong is likely going to get picked off. Actually, a huge two that oh, takes it out Nero, because most of that damage would have been funneled into Nero, and he would have gotten that uh, that Blizzard I was talking about in that failed fight. So at least Alyssa's able to take him out, and so they're pretty even still in terms of Blizzard charge. But the high ground goes to the charge here. Obviously, when you contest and fail, this gets taken away from you as the defending team, and they're now going to have to fight through a different choke point to get it back. Do manage to push their way out, knowing that that hook is down. Heart still just already gaining so much free distance, though. They were just waiting to regroup. Sonic Arrow not going to be spotting much of Blood, and Marvel just going to be taken down. Hot Buff finds a hit. Now two members of the charge up onto the high ground. Means Flood has got to get the heck out of there, but... Now Elicit gone just moments before he could get that Blizzard online. And Soul Dynasty crumbling on this defense here on Route 66. Crumbling big time. Marvel really needs to be careful about his Fortify cooldown because he's the one who's getting halted many of these times. Oh, no. it in, pulled down, let it gone, and that is going to be point B. That's an extreme level of greed to try to think that you were going to get a flank off there. You get halted, you get hooked, you have no support. There's no immortality, but there's no way out. He's trying to deadlift. But unfortunately, that does not pay off. Not at all. The substitution hasn't worked out too great for Soul so far. I mean, it's it's almost like everybody on, on Soul right now kind of playing a bit out of sorts. Like you said, that momentum shift back into the then underdog's favor. It's gonna be mentally taxing. Blizzard will be tossed in here by Alyssa. The transcendence is out. Just to keep everybody alive. And it will be the charge who again come out on top. Numerous kills, five. Well, I do believe they're at the end of it all. When you see the kill feed, you might have thought it was Nero's Blizzard tossed in, but no. no. Soul loses the fight in Blizzard because and the Transcendence is good. And Nero still has his Blizzard. Yep. Hoppa does a ton of damage during the, the Blizzard there. During that Transcendence, he's out of range, so doesn't get caught and blows people up. Walls down. Dragon Strike comes in. They'll pull back. Just behind the cart wall blocking any chip damage. Fleta going on a bit of a flank mission, looking for the pull there, gonna be denied away, but the Dragon Strike goes through, and Fleta just managed to find one, taking down Shu with those Storm Arrows. So a good pick off now, Chara gonna be gone. Marvel pushing up here into the room, will get taken down, but the Soul Dynasty for the first time on Route 66 will have stabilized, will have held back the Guangzhou charge. Yeah, it's finally yeah. able to... To, to sit back and say, I've got control of the high ground, I've got control of this archway, I have the corner I can play around, and I'm no longer trying, scrambling, trying to get back into this game. And there's a big swing of momentum here if they can hold this, especially this push in particular, where the Blizzard is still available. Looking for that next hook. So much value for the wall. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, a lot of value there, but now Ant Matrix be opened up, so Nero just spamming through with those right clicks. Can pick just about anybody if he nails him in the head. Fleta continues to play up on top of the truck here, looking for another back line and disrupting pick. But Jay Hong is gonna be the one taken out. Shoot, Evil is to find that. Blizzard comes around the side, wall up here behind Marvel to lock him off. Try to take him down. Rio shifting over to the side, gets rid of that immortality field, goes right back over under the enemy Arissa, takes him out. Dueling Hogs. And it will be Hoppa coming out on top. Transcendence going to be forced now by Jay Home, just trying to delay as long as he possibly can. Dragon Strike going to be tossed in. Both of them passing each other. 
you can see here, Jay Hong gonna be taken down again as the Wrecking Ball gets swapped off over here from Marvel. Gonna Marvel. buy some time. Wraps back around the corner, Transcendence comes in, saves Hotpa's life as he gets frozen up. Headshot's coming in, but now Flata dragged back through. They get dangerously low. Will be able to make it out with his life intact. It would seem as Illicit will get frozen and eliminated just after using that Blizzard. Dragon Strike manages to find Hotpa. Soul Dynasty might actually be able to stabilize here. And with Nero going down, it seems like they can. They will have to regroup and wait for this next fight. Soul has no tools, though. They had to basically swap Marvel onto the Wrecking Ball to buy time, and then you saw great immortality field usage from Toby, but they used both the critical ultimates, the Dragon Strikes collided, but look at Happy, he's already got another one ready. Elizabeth can't say the same. It's gonna be a tough fight to defend, but they bought a lot of time. Dragon Strike here. He's gonna try to wait and see if the Mortality Field comes out first. Oh, flat out nearly getting picked. Alyssa gonna go down, however. Nero managed to find that. Now Chara gets rid of Toby. It's moments before that Ant Matrix would become available. Dragon Strike tossed over towards that right side. Spawn exit. Another whole hog. Duel coming through, but Michelle unfortunately does not last long for the side of the Dynasty. And that will be the charge rolling through into point C on Route 66. But Dynasty were able to drain a lot of time out of that bank. They were able to drain a lot of that time, but it's not very encouraging, especially when you look at how dominant the control was through both of the streets phases, if you will. You know, either the high ground control that was taken immediately on the lead up to A, and then the control that went through on B. Soul's failure to understand chokes there made a tough call there. I don't wanna say a failure to understand, that's not fair but a risk was taken, right? They decided to try to come out of the choke, got totally obliterated, and the time was massive for the charge. And even though it was eliminated, the majority of it, it lets you know that Guangzhou has a way better understanding of how to operate around those points on this map, which means that they're gonna have a better shot here to, to defend this. I mean, they're gonna have a, a better shot to control this, I should say. I, I feel like if Soul wants to get a, a completion on this map, they're going to have to play a lot better than they just did on the exact same points. They're gonna have to control high ground. Fleta cannot be up there by himself trying to be a superhero. I mean, Fled is a superhero to all of us, but uh, not in this particular map when he was trying to flank there from behind. These things, you know, these small errors uh, for the Soul Dynasty and risks they took may come back to cost them. I mean, that first map of control was so close, as everyone remembers. Oh. Happy just waiting for someone to show their head here. Hook nearly pulls in Marvel. Also nearly just gets taken down, regardless of that. Happy just looking and dodging around both sides of this train car, trying to keep himself safe. Sees a push around there from Michelle, heard the hook go out. Feel safe enough to play that far over to the side, but unless it will be able to come up with a kill. Michelle now going to be taken down. Immortality Field is in behind the barrier. She'll play forward, but that will be eliminated now. It will be a slight retreat from the Guangzhou charge as they wait for the rest of their team to join in, namely Happy, who had been taken down. This has had some great walls so far here on this attack. There's another one. Yep. And that's so important. You have to be lightning fast on those walls versus a Zenyatta who's got Discord. You can see on the other side, Nero does the same. Yep. Toss out those walls like clockwork every single time the halt comes in. He's Marvel, ready for it. Again, late on the fortify. He's got to be careful about that. Yeah, Matrix going to be used. Let them up. Chara laying that one down. Now Toby going to be matching. Many walls don't stand a chance versus that one. But now walls out of position to really be utilized. Dragon Strike tossed in by Fleta. Looks a bit of damage there on Mario and Marvel is able to finish him off. Decent pace so far for this whole dynasty, but they say that Flutter will get picked, which could slow them up just a bit. Jay Hong playing around the side. Marvel going over to support. Another barrier coming down, and that's going to be the Blizzard tossed in by Nero. Builds that one up a little bit faster than Alyssa can. They're able to contest this because everyone was here. Swing Blizzard now on the other side. She's going to be using that transcend to make sure that he doesn't get locked up. Mortality field thrown down for good measure as well by Chara. That'll get finished off just after he gets eliminated. Now Illicit, locked at the moment, will get cut down by Hot Butt, but Storm Arrows from Flutter finish off the enemy Hog. And that will be the Dynasty gliding forward here into point A. Four and a half minutes 
and the time bank for them for the next stretch. So 30 seconds difference uh, from what we saw from the charge on their attack. Yep. The charge risked a lot with that last fight, but at least they were set up for it. Soul reacted See, very well. Uh, now it's going to look a little bit different than when Fleta was on this high ground last time. He has control of the choke and will shortly have a dragon strike. Not fast enough, though, to stop them from spilling out. Yeah, there's going to have to be some respect here for Fleta. Good flicks, though. Michelle manages to pull Rio up onto that high ground. So, very easy pick off wall. Keep them contained. That's also the dragon strike. Through during the retreat. Yeah, I don't, know, odd. I don't, don't know if I'm gonna, I'm gonna like that one. It looks tempting, right? It's one of those those moments where you feel like, wow, this will be great no matter what. We'll zone him back, but that's a big missing tool for the Guangzhou right now when they're gonna be able to come out of choke points when they're on the attack. As they're retreating, you're not really trying to stop them from, from exiting. They still have positional advantage though right now as Guangzhou make this approach. You know, gotta be careful. Pushing up behind it that barrier in front of it, rather. So a lot of damage being taken. Supercharger gonna be used here by Rio's Immortality Field comes in and Michelle dead in transit as that hook comes through. Nero manages to find the snipe and that is gonna be the cart snatched up by the Guangzhou charge for now. Now it's time to start worrying. Now it's time to, to start really freaking out if you're a soul fan because remember when they were able to finish with 124, they basically got the full cap instantly. And this is a lot of delay already, and high ground taken away from Seoul. Certainly fair. Jay Hall nearly sniped out. Happy. Michelle. Wasn't ready for that one. As Michelle comes around from the flank. It's like he's invisible. Mortality field's gonna be used. Michelle going around with that whole hog. And has to play back. He takes a little bit too much damage. Doesn't have the support that he needs to try to stay forward into the fight. Dragon Strike tossed out by Happy. Chara getting sniped. Transcendent ceiling means nothing when you get insta gift. But it comes up with a crucial pickoff there. Those are now going to be used. Nero, he to catch them off guard. Ice block going to be used by Illicit on the cart. As Jay Home pushes forward, now uses that transcendence, keeping Illicit topped up. Dragon Strike, through Dragon Strike going to be used. Papa taken down by the hook. Just that little bit of damage from Michelle finishes him off. He follows up with a kill on the Rio now. Now Nero, and that should be point B snatched up here with by the Soul Dynasty. Happy builds 40%. Another Dragon Strike as well during that delay. You see Chara just buy some time as they scramble to get back out of spawn so they don't get camped there in the chokes. Try to get that high ground back if they can. Easier said than done as you can see Happy is just checking before he climbs that wall to see if it's even reasonable to try to take it. He can't yet. They're going to have to win a ground-based fight first. Well, solid stuff for the ground-based fight for the charge. Yeah, they get the hook. Bring Marvel to you. And we talk so much about high ground, low ground here because it's important that if you have the high ground, your opponent has to play so differently in terms of the Hanzo v Hanzo. You don't have as much line of sight for your May right clicks. It's way easier to do damage, drop blizzards, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I mean, it's a pretty simple, you know, concept to understand. But you lose it when you lose that arch fight, so you have to retake it. And that's exactly what the charge were just able to do. Two and a half for the Soul Dynasty. Let's see if they creep forward. And Matrix gonna use, but the Dragon Strike is there, and Toby's gonna be taken down. Marvel as well with a sliver of HP. Manages to peel back over into that Immortality Field. Let it just fly. Spool out, but oh man, gets caught. That was insane. Crazy hook here from Hoppa. And we're reaching the, the point where Soul is gonna be, you know, I think we've already reached it, in fact, where they're not gonna get the better time bank. It's extremely unlikely because they don't have ultimates. They're swapping over to the Reaper May here. I mean, it's five ultimates right now for yeah. charge. I mean, this is the equivalent of like, all right, we're swapping to goats, right? At the end of the, of the point. Coming in, you've got the Blizzard, but that's it. And Matrix used by Chara. <laughs> Up there onto the high ground. Jayhawk gonna be chasing forward, has that Transcendence ready to go. As they throw down the Blizzard from Alyssa, but Flutter is already eliminated. They freeze up Hanfa, who managed to finish him off. Jayhawk Jay comes up with another one. Now Shu gonna be taken down. These sightlines are cut off a bit. He's looking for the next target. Form of Harmony thrown down onto Alyssa. The wall comes up as he tries to keep himself safe. Playing up there onto the cart. Jay Hong trying to wrap around, get that high ground advantage. Barrier blocks off so many of these orbs. Now Shu pushing forward. And oh man, gets chunked down about half HP. He's gonna be thinking better of that one next time. All right, Dynasty are now in dire straits. That's looking like a game five here. Alyssa, use the Blizzard, doesn't get enough value. 
Just need to get the finish here. Will get that minute time bump up. Can they make their way through? Hoppa misses out on the hook. The Dragon Strike goes through from Happy, but doesn't find any picks. But now it's time for the whole hog. Mortality Field is going to be taken down. But a hovering at about half HP. The Dynasty just peeling back. They have 45 seconds remaining now. A lot of the ultimates on the side of the charge have been expended. Ant Matrix now going to be used. This is Soul's fight right now. Have to try to make this one work. Flutta trying to get up into the face, trying to take the Alyssa, down. No. Get picked and now Alyssa pulled in. The Blizzard not going to be able to be used in this fight. That was exactly the exact moment he wanted. He went onto the high ground there because he knew he had the Blizzard ready to go. He was going to drop it from high ground, but they predicted it. They still managed to come up with two kills here, though. It's Hot Fun Shoe both get taken down. Trinset is going to be used by Jayhawk. Just trying to allow for the rest of the team to rejoin. Nero is taken down. As that Blossom comes in, Flutter trying to be protected. Michelle doing the best that he can with that defense matrix. Keep him in the fight. Now the sound barrier comes through from Toby. Blizzard's still there from Melissa. He makes his way back over here, waiting for the transcendence to expire. The dragon strike rolling through onto the cart. Unable to find any kills. Shu gonna be taken down now. Happy gonna be gone. Just have to clear off the tanks. His hot bucket's knocked out of the mech. Rio, the last one playing forward. Hero makes his way into the ice block, drops the Blizzard. It hasn't been finished off yet. Marvel now gonna be first. Michelle's down. As well, exiting the ice block. They start inching forward again as the wall comes in. Pile Driver not going to get the connection. Nero frozen for the moment, but still kept alive. They just now finish off that immortality field. Michelle going to be gone, trying to rejoin. With that, something struck, ready to go. But Real comes back in. Pile Driver comes down. Minefield tossed out by Marvel, but he's going to get taken out. OT starts bleeding away. Happy into the back, trying to get rid of Jay Hong. Has to recall out, but now Toby going to be eliminated, and they hold him off. Ladies and gentlemen, we do, in fact, have one more map for you tonight. That is absolutely right. <laughs> this has been a phenomenal series down to the wire. Great delay tactics there from the charge and big plays from Chara. All of his immortality fields were really well placed during that delay and they were able to prevent Remex. They were able to stabilize the charge looking real good. We had one reverse sweep earlier today. Do we get another one here at the end of the night? Let's find out when we come back to the next map. So here we are again, another reverse sweep on the horizon. Guangzhou Charge looking to close this one out over the Seoul Dynasty. It was such a strong start from them, but now 
slipping through their fingers is this series ever since King's Row with the overtime. It's kind of trending downward a bit. Now going to be looking to stabilize with one final round of control. That's right. Two tiebreakers back to back for us here. And for Seoul, you're so frustrated that you've let this one nearly slip through your fingers. And they had a great start to the series. They subbed Fleta in on that final map after things were clearly not working the way they wanted them to be when we were on King's Row. Doesn't work out the way that they had planned in terms of how much impact Fleta had. He was playing mostly the Hanzo throughout that map, and he wasn't able to win the fight against Happy. He wasn't able to take that high ground control. Well, with this final map, we do have a lot of substitutions coming through. Just a couple, rather, as Eileen will be taking to the stage for the first time here in this series, subbing in for Happy. Yeah, kind of a rare one. Leans towards normally Sombra, Doomfist type hero pool. And then Fitz will be rejoining as well as Fleta takes a step back. And Fleta having not the worst map of all time, but, you know, he ended up losing the match. Uh, I don't want to say he lost the match for them, but he, he lost the matchup versus Happy and versus Nero there. Just wasn't able to find that same sort of synergy. And I like what you were alluding to earlier is how important it is to have, uh, you know, a duo that's been playing together and scrimming together a lot. And it's just very clear that Fitz and Alyssa is I mean, the main DPS duo, if you will. Nero going to be staying in here. So the nero Eileen chemistry and how well that synergy works, that's something we're going to uh, rediscover here. We've, it's not the first time we've seen these two play together. <laughs> He's giving them a, a, some encouragement here as they get ready to move in, holding hands. I like it. Well, I'm already good pretty stuff. sold on the chemistry. Yeah, the here. synergy's looking good. <laughs> uh, I think if the Dynasty could see that right now, they should be very scared. But well, I mean, also, I mean, we saw Nero just moments ago talking very rapidly here to his squad. So it seems like communication is just, again, holding up quite well here for this team. Now, one of the curious things about this uh, Fleta sub is that potentially we could see Farah on this map. Fleta definitely uh, a very strong Farah player. Uh, this may mean that they, as we head into Lijong here, uh, this may mean that they have more faith in Elicit's Farah now than Fleta's, which would be, I think, in terms of the organization's opinions, like a pretty bold statement, right? To, to put Elicit in on this map if he will be playing the Farah. Eileen on the Doomfist to start, so not a big shocker. This is the better yeah. map for the Doomfist than Ilios, for example, minus like, you know, staggers and trying to run in and touch the point. It's a big risk, too, for the charge. I mean, this, is, this series has had a little bit of everything. So many subs. You know, the Eileen tech in substitution here for Doomfist. Will it pay off? Well, as you can see right there, Guangzhou Charge have never successfully reverse swept anybody this season. So let's see if they can pull it off or if they will get stopped just shy of it. Eileen pushing here onto the low ground with the rest of his squad. He'll be looking for his opportunity to go punch in forward. So hard to close the distance here. Yep, charges that one up. They have the main wall. And I'm sure that they get that extra impact, but it doesn't result in any kills. Goes back in. Chunks Marvel quite low. Cosmic slams his way back out to safety, but Papa's mech going lower and lower, but there's the punch on the fit. Knocks the Reaper right out of the park, now dropping back through. Getting all that shielding through. Now Toby eliminated as well. Eileen looking solid, as always, on the Doomfist. And the thing about Doomfist, too, is that it's pick-based. You're looking for these blow-up kills with Rocket Punch. It synergizes with the May Wall. You put a May Wall up, you have that back drop for the punch to succeed with. It's the opposite of Reaper in terms of how Reaper operates in this uh, this composition. Reaper's doing slow burn damage. Very difficult to kill. You know, most of the kills you see is with the ultimate when he does build that up. But Doomfist is just going to skip that part. You're not going to take the slow team fight. You're going to set up a wall, and you're going to get that Rocket Punch kill. That's the idea, and so far, so good. Yep. Would love to see some Doom v. Doom action if Fitz were to pick it up. All going to come out now from Nero. Elicit using his as well. Blizzards are available for both of these teams. Freeze is there on the Marvel first. The Blizzard gets thrown down by Elicit. Nero still holding his for the moment. Rio going to be eliminated now. With the Meteor Strike coming in. That's a couple members low, but the Sound Barrier Shields keep them alive through that Meteor Strike. But the, and the Death Blossom follow-up from Fitz claims the lives of two. I think that Eileen may have to swap here because you're not going to be able to operate on the point the same way anymore. He lost his ultimate, so did Nero. And even though the sound barrier came out from Chara and hit everyone, you can't fight with a Doomfist. You can't utilize a Doomfist. You can't build shields 
while he's frozen or even while he's slowed. It's impossible, right? So, you know, now that they have this choke controlled and it's harder for them to set up the wall, they have to wrap around the right side. And let's see if the punches are good. Oh, they made one approach before getting that point. See if they can do it again. Rio going low nearly as a supercharger online. Self-destruct going to be coming out from Hot, but now looks for a pick and managed to find Toby. Well, people, I thought Toby would have been the one able to dodge that one. Eileen will get picked off by Elicit and the supercharger cleaned up by the coalescence there from Jay Hong. Still charge entrenched into the point, looking for a very fairly fast flip here back into their favor. Elicit going to be exiting that ice block, doesn't stand a chance, gets finished off. Now Toby, under threat of being frozen. We'll get the boot back here on the Nero, delaying the inevitable for a bit longer, it would seem. Soul Dynasty is streaming forward here onto the point, trying to delay as much and get as much percentage as they possibly can. There's a lot to unpack here, but I think the big standout right now is that the Charge were able to make this fight work down a member, out of position, through a really well-placed self-destruct from Papa. They have the Meteor Strike ready soon here, so that's extra survivability for Eileen. When the next fight happens, Toby, no sound barrier. This is going to be a slow approach here. And if anyone gets punched, the attack is over. You cannot get caught by that combo with the Maywall. Both of these Divas are going to be looking to knock up these Blizzards that are ready to go. Coalescence out from both of these Moiras. Bit of a Saiyan battle coming through. Wall comes up now for Illicit. The punch goes in and Fitz goes down. He's going to be hitting the ground. The Meteor Strike coming in. He'll cut around the other side of the wall. Looks to get the freeze there on Eileen, but he's able to escape. And Illicit cannot get into the ice block fast enough. Just gets picked off. Another punch from Eileen. Takes out Toby. With the sound barrier being used and hit at 97%, it seems like this first round is not going to go the way of the Soul Dynasty. Eileen doesn't care if you have a Death Blossom. He's just going to greet you with an uppercut to the jaw. Fitz goes down again. Follow up on the J-Hong, and the OT will start bleeding away. Blizzard are going to be lobbed in by Illicit. It's right at the front of the point. Marvel does make his way through, but is frozen. Illicit's out of the ice block. Nobody's just trying to exist around the back of the point. Nearly gets sent into oblivion off the side, but either way, can't tag back in. 159%. Guangzhou charge with the first round win on Li Zhang. Really nice focus fire onto Illicit in that second to last fight where he died before he could use Blizzard because the Soul Dynasty sound barrier, they were planning and banking everything on winning that fight with Illicit's Blizzard in the position they were trying to get him through with all the healing, all the support. And losing a Mei in this meta, I know I keep kind of comparing it to Ghost, but I think a lot of people watch that all season, so it's somewhat relatable because the comps operate similarly. Losing a Mei is kind of like losing a Zarya in Goats. You lose the slow ability, you lose your big ultimate, in this case, the Blizzard, and you lose a lot of damage. You lose a lot of pick potential. You lose your wall. Mei is so much utility, especially when you're running such similar compositions. Now, the charge, I'm gonna run the Reinhardt here for the setup of the Doomfist, but not the Zarya, so not going all in on that strategy, just continuing to use Ice Wall, Rocket Punch. Eileen's been hitting them. Well, this time the wall comes in from Melissa, just to block out that Rocket Punch. The next Goes one, back though. in, oh man, almost found Toby with that one. Instead, just softening up Michelle. As he tries to work his way into the back. Cancels out on that one as the point does unlock. Seismic Slam in, that's the uppercut, and Jayhawk is obliterated. It is at the cost of Rio, however, so Frontline going to be suffering a bit, but you can see the slow healing coming through from Toby, trying to keep everybody alive. So far, Marvel and Michelle do last for a little bit longer, but they'll finally lose out on that mech, and the sound barrier will be committed as the Meteor Strike drops down from above. Eileen looking for the punch. The hit in, Blizzard comes down, and Nero gets rid of Marvel. Well, this is going to be gone. Fitz able to answer back one, but then is taken down by the Coalescence. Three members gone on the side of the Soul Dynasty. They got the point for just a moment, a taste! But now they lose it. So critical, too, that they were able to get that that final pick there, that final elimination. When you're getting these kills with the, the Doomfist, you need to get two, at least, basically, to win a fight, because otherwise the healing that you mentioned, the sustainability for the front line, it's there. And you win the longer fight as soul every time, so you have to be hitting those punches repeatedly. Oh, well, that's going to be the Nano here on a pit. Takes that punch, holding on to the Death Blossom. It seems like he's not going to be using it now, but as I say that, we'll go ahead and invest it. Cancelled, and Rio going to be taken down. So Fitz comes up with a double, but Eileen does manage to find one back. With Chara and Hotba knocked out of the mech. That will be 
Dynasty getting ready to regain control here of the point. 7% where they're starting. Guangzhou lose it at 39. Every time Eileen's Rocket Punch doesn't kill someone, the potential to win the team fight goes down astronomically. And he's slept now, so that's going to delay this next push. This is going to be some free percentage. Let's see if they can make a pick happen with the first punch this time, because right now, Alyssa is shutting these down so well with his own ice walls, adapting on the fly. Ice wall cool down a lot longer than that rocket punch, but Rio just gets juggled around. No He'll punch kill. Taken down. Yeah, he's looking for it there on a marble, but does have to abandon after losing out of the Reinhardt. Now, Sleep Dart connected in onto Hanpa. And he's gonna try to make his way off the side of the map, but they will just boop him around and get that nice little stagger coming in. One of these, you know, this is one of these compositions. <laughs> this is one of these compositions that Guangzhou's running. That could have went longer too. When you look like a god, if you come in and get two kills, get a triple, and you're getting the picks and your team is winning the fight, but you also look foolish if you don't swap when you're not getting rocket punch kills anymore and Soul's adapting and you can see the ice walls coming up and Soul's positioning so that these punches can't work. All right, well, they're trying to split attention here as that lead goes through. The rest of the team plays up into the front. The Meteor Strike comes down, not going to be able to find any kills. And Jaehong, set up for a moment, will get saved by that sound barrier. But Elicit loses out of the Blizzard. Hoppa is taking that one away. And now Elicit's going to be killed off. And Hoppa comes up with a double kill. Pits and Jaehong both going to be taken down. Michelle losing out onto the mech as a self-destruct that has to hold on to that for the next fight. Dynasty. Trying to buy as much as they can. We'll just go ahead and finish this one out. Allow the flip to come through. 39% moving up for the charge. Now the choke is controlled by the charge. Fitz has that death blossom. He's going to try to reposition around the edge. That's his best shot if he really wants to have an opportunity to use this. He's actually, he's going straight through the middle. They're going to use the ice wall. Faking it up. out, faking it out. Yeah, wrapping back around towards main. Fire Strike not going to hit anything. Limited ultimate availability here for the long throw charge. Just going to be that coalescence for Shu. Has that one online now. Mid's dropping down. Look at them get the finishing blows in. On to Rios. He doesn't know which way to look. The Bionade sets him up as well. He will get taken down. So Dynasty trying to extend this into a third and final round. Another Death Blossom going to be dropped in. Hoppa but getting a bit as much as he possibly can with that D-Matrix. He still lose out on to Nero. Now Eileen's going to be gone. Fitz. Serious work done with this Reaper. Gets the pop out here. Guangzhou charge. About to take the lead, but it seems like it's only going to be for a couple seconds as the flip will come back through in favor of the Soul Dynasty. This fight is going to decide the round. And right now, if you look at the ultimates, Illicit should be able to stop them from really getting a, a great touch. I mean, if he gets a Blizzard off here and, they, and half the team can touch, that's not enough. Eileen's trying to rotate in. Yeah, has to use the Meteor Strike just to get out into the backside. 98%. They do manage to tag in, but as soon as Eileen hits the ground, he can't get healing. Instead, he's greeted by Fitz. Takes him out of the fight. Marvel, however, is still going to be finished off. They get the freeze in. Shatter comes down. Alyssa going to get cleaned up. The Blizzard is there, but can they capitalize on top of the freezes? The answer is going to be no. Fitz comes back in, uses that Death Blossom, but doesn't get anything for it. Hoppa going to be taken down. So waiting for Alyssa to rejoin. Overtime here for the Soul Dynasty. Bomb to the back, takes down Eileen. Rio huge. trying to play up here into the front. They get the sleep on the shoe in the back line. They take him out. Three members still going to be dead on the side of the Guangzhou charge. They wait for those respawns. It's not going to last long enough. They get zoned off the point for just a couple seconds. Soul Dynasty are able to take that second round. Control center goes their way. Now we settle it all on Gardens again. Gardens, where we could see the far come out here. We saw it from Shadowburn in the previous series. It was the X-Factor. It was the really uh, game-changing hero pick for them. Elicit has played a lot of far in the past, and this is the moment where we have to all accept that at this point in time, the Soul Dynasty coaching staff has given Elicit the far, not Fleta. This is an actual change in Dynasty history that we're witnessing right now, is Elicit is put on the far, not Fleta. You know, they can both play Pretty good May. He's got the better May too. Elicit's now the DPS player, the, the one, the icon, the face of Soul Dynasty. It's not Fleta. Let's see if he can make this count and stop this reverse sweep. The rookie player from Korea. Rocket's oh, coming down multiple ways that Elicit needs to be looking to make sure that he's going to be safe. They find Shu. Marvel will be eliminated. Elicit gets one direct hit. Nero, however, comes up with two of the pockets, keeping both of these Faras alive. They'll be hovering around half HP as Nero is hot on their heels. 
Direct hit onto each of them, but doesn't result in a kill. Jay Hong and Eileen just gonna be killing each other off in the meantime as Nero plays around the window. Looking to get that barrage online. I mean, look at the charge differences here. Illicit, much further behind Nero, ready to go. Tries to push his way forward. Anabu's gonna toss in onto Fitz, trying to get that. Salt online, it would seem. Oh man, barrage straight into the face! Is it, it worth one -oh. Is it worth it? Now, but yeah, Fitz, he comes up with two. And Rio gone as well. And this is a huge ultimate loss now for the charge. The flip is going to be Soul Dynasties here. And unfortunately, the Doomfist pick doesn't have a ton of synergy. I'm gonna take a look at Jae Hong here as well. Sees the punch coming through. Oh. He shuts him down. <laughs> Taking each other out. That's huge though, because that helps set up that last fight. Yeah, that's a trade that you want actually, because you don't want the Doomfist to get out of control. Well, Nero is trying to lap a list at the moment here. As Fitz plays up around the corner with the Death Blossom available, but has to use that Wraith Walk. Down to 70 HP. Jay Hong going to be taken down by Nero again, second time in a row. As Marvel goes in deep to the pile driver, but does get punished for it. Aline now starting to zone people off the point with these rocket punches. Such a huge stylistic difference between these two teams, and you know, it's working now for the charge. They break through, they're gonna get the flip. Yep, eventually. And the barrage is there for both of these Faras. Who's gonna fire first? <laughs> get the res here. On a Michelle, they're trying to buy as much time as they possibly can. Stretching this one up towards 50%. Jay Hong gonna get jumped on, punch comes through, but Jay Hong keeps himself alive with the bio nade. Marvel now gone. Point still not flipped in. Jay Hong this time, he doesn't get taken down. It's not an exchange. It's a one-way street for him. Barrage comes down from Alyssa. Hot Pot Rio both gonna be eliminated in the Soul Dynasty. And actually strung this one together. Alyssa gets another kill on the Nero. It's now Chara. Oh man. 70% here. The leaders in Guangzhou Charge have one more shot. Swapping Eileen away from the Doomfist now onto this Sombra. They're gonna have a resurrect. They're gonna have a resurrect available here as well. And Nero has the opportunity to turn this with one ultimate alone. But it's gonna be up to Michelle to shut that down and win this series, prevent the reverse sweep. Pushing the way forward. All Blank. down to this fight. Blank damage being applied there from Alyssa. Nero's dead. gonna be gone! Can he camp the body though? Can Chara get the res off? Uncertain exactly where he died. Hack comes in, but Elicit lands safely on the ground. Will be able to just go ahead and pull back around the side, keeping himself safe. We're into overtime. The OT starting to bleed away. Someone's gonna have the tag in. Very managed to make their way through. It is Rio. He's greeted with a bio nade. So can't get top back up yet. Appa now inching forward. Michelle gonna be hacked. Toby takes the skies with a Valkyrie. As Fitz gets closer and closer. That next Death Blossom wasn't quite far forward. Will get taken down. Eileen finds the kill. Death Blossom is in. But here comes the Mirage. Nero pushes his way through the window, manages to find one. And now Eileen gonna be taken down. One man advantage to the side of the Guangzhou charge. Now it's two. As Toby will be eliminated as well. Big bio from Jae Hong though. Nano gonna be tossed in by Jae Hong, trying to keep them in the fight. Bionade connects as you say, but it's not a follow up. Fitz is returning, Fitz is returning, but I don't think they can flip this. They lasted for so long the one time, can they do it again? They're looking for the flip, Char gonna be taken down in the minefield, Michelle gonna be knocked out of the mech. Cannot use that something to try to make his way back in, however, Alyssa's gonna be dead with the barrage available. Fitz gets rid of Shu, shutting him down. Toby, however, gonna be eliminated. Nero managed to come back in and scoop a kill onto the Doomfist. Follows up with another one now onto Jae Hong. Alyssa poking from range, seems like he doesn't want to play forward for the barrage. They know the fight is gonna be gone. Michelle will just go ahead and play back. Hoppa is so low. Hoppa is so low. They need to keep him alive. They need to get him healed up right now because he's going to have to block that barrage very likely. Fitz going to make the similar swap over here to the Sombra. They know that all they need is one team fight. That's it. So they're going to play around EMP. Even if Illicit Barrage is here, he should be able to build a second one, potentially more, before this map is over. 99 to 0 lead gives you these sorts of opportunities. Illicit's threatening pop up. He gets team actor. If he uses too much of his matrix, this map could end in a second. Rockets coming through, Elicit getting the better of Nero the last couple times. Look for that push off there on Eileen, but Translocator was used and now Marvel gonna be taken down. Just have to play around the back. Rio. See Rio. Could use a much. barrage on him, but they see the Diva right there. It's just not worth it. Not worth the risk. Well, Eileen is racing up faster to EMP here. Now, this is actually a scary thought because if he gets the first EMP off and they turn that fight, they could start to set up some staggers that could lead Soul to a loss here. Complete that reverse sweep. It's actually really huge that he's gonna have it first. He's into the 
back. The hack goes forward on the Toby. So they try to get the kill, and Nero's able to do so. Follows up with a barrage, but gets slumped instantly by Jay Hollis. It comes back over onto the side with the nano boost. Gets rid of the counterpart, Farah. Seems like Jara not going to be able to get a res, at least not yet. Coalescence now coming down from Shu. Trying to keep everybody else alive. Listen, waiting for his opportunity with love to get Hoppa out of that mech when the EMP comes in, manages to clip the Farah, so has to still play around the outside. And so wait, the charge gets closer staggers. and closer. They're at 77%. Marvel gonna be taken down for the minefield. This is the stagger I was talking about when Eileen uses his EMP. Now Fitz has his own, and he can set this up if he can hack Hoppa. So normally it's the supports who have to hide, but in this case it's kind of Hoppa. He has to make sure he does not get hacked in this fight. Well, they're gonna lose this, they're gonna lose control. Yep, the EMP barrage is ready to go. Fitz the scene, Fitz the scene. Out. Fitz, gonna get knocked out. Yeah, think of himself. Uses that EMP, does manage to catch Hoppa, but so far the barrage is not coming in. Uses it now, getting them off the point, but now Marvel gonna be taken down. Eileen finds a kill. Hoppa, bionated, knocked out of the mech, but uses the self destruct. And Nero comes back in, scoops a kill onto Illicit. We're into double overtime. And Soul Dynasty, they're losing numbers. Jay Home gonna be gone. Toby trying to survive, but Nero says no. He has no mercy. Cuts him down. Fitz is gonna be eliminated. Marvel manages to swing his way back through. Finds one. The self destruct from Michelle. Unable to find anything. Illicit. Can't make it back in the mech either. Can he touch? Can Illicit touch? He can get in here and get some shields perhaps. He's they, almost there. They tag back in, but Marvel, he just cannot last long enough. They can't get back onto the point, and the Guangzhou Charge have pulled it off. The second reverse sweep here today, their first of the season. They shut down the hopes and dreams of the Soul Dynasty. They take it three to two. What a series for the Guangzhou Charge. We saw the Doomfist come through. They risked it all on Eileen. He comes up big on the Sombra as well. And Soul Dynasty lose another series that's so critical for them if they're going to stay in that top six and skip play-ins. You know, they haven't had the best run so far in the playoffs we've seen this year. Play-ins could be a challenge with some of these new rising teams. They may face Guangzhou Charge again in those play-ins if they can't make that top six. And this just puts them one step further away. We really did see, I feel, a change of the guard here in terms of the Farah with Illicit taking over that role here. This is a new Soul Dynasty, a new era, and it has been all year long. We got to see the support line from Lunatic High match with the new rookie DPS players today, but they weren't able to close it out. Well, we do have Danny Lim standing by on the floor with Shu for an interview, so let's go ahead and hear from him. Wolfie and Achilles, thank you very much. I have Shu right here next to me. Wow, what a series. Reverse sweep for you. How are you feeling? Uh, this is actually our first time getting a reverse sweep. I feel really, really great. That's actually going to be my question. Uh, getting the reverse sweep. How are you able to get the reverse sweep? Pretty much we just really concentrated. Our coaching staff said they kept on saying that we could do it, we could do it. And also our teammates, everyone on our team was really hopeful. We always encouraged each other and that's how we got the reverse sweep. Well, congratulations. And also today, you faced off against one of the legendary flex supports, Jae Hong. And your next match is against NYXL and they have Jonak on that team, right? How are you going to defeat Jonak? For, for your match against NYXL. 오늘은 재웅 선수를 꺾으시게 됐고 다음엔 또 작년 MVP였던 어 이제 조낙 선수와 경기가 있을 텐데 좀 어떻게 하면 조낙 선수를 이길 수 있을까요? 제가 제일 좋아하는 선수들이 류재영 선수랑 조낙 선수인데 일단 류재영 선수는 제가 진짜 존경하는 선수고 조낙 선수도 잘하는 선수지만 저희가 더 열심히 준비해서 이기도록 하겠습니다. I really, really like both of the players. Jae Hong and Jonak is two of my favorite players. As for, as for Jae Hong, I really look up to him um, as a flex support. And Jonak, he's a really great flex support as well. So what we have to do is really focus and just try our best to defeat NYXL. Well, thank you so much, Shu. Wolf and Wakilios, back to you guys. Thank you very much, Danny. Good to hear from Shu. Good to hear, you know, how it feels coming out of a reverse sweep like that, taking down a legendary player in the same role as yourself. I, uh, you know, just insanity. We kind of knew it was going to go the distance. Why not? But uh, we made it all the way to that third and final round of map five. Again, taking a look at the standings, you can see that the Dynasty have now dipped down to ninth place. Map differential, still a lot stronger than that of the Fusion and the Dragons, but they need to get those wins on the board. Charge got the 500, which we call when you are able to finally equalize in win losses. They're at 13 and 13. Yep. And Dynasty is one loss away from being at the same spot. So this is a big shift 
around our 7th to 12th place teams, Dynasty looked like they were a almost shoe in to make the top six at the beginning of the season, but they have just been inconsistent left and right here in stage four. This was a series they needed to win, and they were just not able to close it out. Just try it as they may. I mean, it doesn't get any closer than that. I mean, it really doesn't. Yeah, I mean, both of our, you know, all of our game five series that we've had today, a bit of nail biters, but let's go ahead and figure out who our player of the match is presented by Omen by HP for the side of the charge, and it's gonna be Hoppa. Hoppa had some great moments on the D.Va in particular at the end of the series, but it was the Roadhog he had that led to so many kills and picks. And every time Marvel messed up his Fortify, used it too late so he would be halted, Hoppa was there. They played well around Shu's Zenyatta almost all series long, but this caught most people are running the Ana. Zenyatta's a little bit more of a rarity, it's a little bit riskier, but he played well around the Discord orbs and helped set up almost all the kills we saw there when the halts came through. Great plays. And he also was able to negate several critical ultimates yep. in those close maps. Three taken away with 83 limbs and just 18 deaths throughout the series. Fantastic stuff from Hoppa, both from the Diva and the Roadhog. And a fantastic series for the side of the Guangzhou Charge pulling off their first reverse sweep ever. But guys, that's it for the matches. But we, of course, have the Watchpoint post show coming up next. So make sure you guys stay tuned. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Toyota, official North American partner of the Overwatch League. Toyota, let's go places.